chapter 231, public law, 1975, the Public Meetings Act. I have good notice uh, this meeting has been provided as specified in the Act. Proper notice of the public meeting was provided in the notice April 28, 2010. Said notice was posted at the entrance of the Board of Education offices. Milton and Nutley Sun, Star Ledger, North Jersey Herald and News, and the Nutley Journal. Milton and Nutley Township Clerk, advertising the Nutley Sun on May 6, 2010, posted on the district website. This is an official meeting. Please rise for the flight salute the moment of time. Schedule is this 2010 spring season awards. We're going to forego those uh, this evening and go directly to our curriculum presentations. So, uh, Mr. Zarek? Yes, thank you. Uh, as everyone, I believe, uh, knows, we've had a major overhaul of our curriculum from kindergarten through high school. These are the final presentations. Wednesday morning, we are meeting with the county office for a six-month review of our QSAC report and the progress that we've made since then. We will be happy to tell them that all these curriculums, in fact, have been revised during the course of this school year. I'd like to start with uh, Mr. O'Dell, Chairperson of Social Studies. Thank you, Mr. Zarek. Uh, as Mr. Zarek noted, we were in the midst of uh, the NJ QSAC revision this year. And uh, I would like to start by thanking the administration, the board, and all the teachers and administrators who put an awful lot of hard work into this, doing all those curriculum sessions, and also a lot of work beyond. You know, people took work home, worked overnight. Uh, my particular document is 441 pages long. And you know, as you can see uh, by the other departments, you know, an awful lot of work went into every subject matter. For social studies, the timing was fortuitous in that the new standards were issued in September uh, just as we began the process. And what were once six standards were condensed down to three uh, with a heavy uh, emphasis on history that most of the common social studies uh, skills and uh, bits of content area would be infused into the historical part of the curriculum. Now, the three standards were uh, 6.1 U.S. History, America, and the World, 6.2, uh, world History Global Studies, and in keeping with uh, one of the emphases in uh, the 21st Century Skills 6.3, Active Citizenship in the 21st Century. The curriculum is also divided into uh, three benchmarks, <coughs> 1 to 4, 5 to 8, and 9 to 12. Uh, Mr. Carney uh, helped oversee the uh, 1 to 4 section, and here the teachers did an outstanding job emphasizing that here the students learned the uh, first elements of civic virtue. And that's really the core vision of social studies, to develop the citizens we need for tomorrow. It's our whole rationale for being. So the curriculum starts with what the students know, broadens out to uh, give them a vision of the outer world, their country, their state, and by grades three and four, they're starting to infuse uh, history into the study of New Jersey, the early American Revolution, you know, up to that period. Now, grades five to eight, everything becomes much more specific. And here is where most of the major changes were made. We designed this curriculum to address the three new standards immediately before uh, a pending grade eight assessment. So in grade six, that will be a heavy emphasis on civics. They'll use a series put out by Congress called We the People. 
Uh, also, I'm working with the New Jersey Center for Law Related Education, uh, Project Citizen, where students will uh, frame uh, civic issues, learn how to present them, probably someday be talking before this board or something like it. Uh, and also for spring, the work on economic and financial literacy, which was a big push of former Governor Corzine and picked up by our current Governor Christie. Grade seven will pick up the early American history. Grade eight will be the first half of world history up to about the year 1500, setting the stage for their transfer across the street. Now that left grade five, which was a place where we decided that we really needed an emphasis on geography and the geographic literacy that you need as a citizen of the modern world. So that curriculum uh, is going to use some new technology. It's also where we will infuse a lot of the technology that the 21st century skills demand and working with uh, Ms. Osija and her curriculum. So as you see up there, we have a program that we're going to use called Stratologica. And to make this work quickly, this will be on every teacher's smart board. So your old maps that you have, I'm trying to be very quick with this. This, this kind of, you're seeing this on a um, website, so it's not quite the quickness that you want to see when this is wired into the smart boards. This is all the educational maps laid over Google Earth. And what it will allow the teacher to do is, uh, let's zoom on me. Take this back out. Anyway, everything becomes more 3D, so they can rotate. For example, you'll make a lesson on which way is south, they always confuse up and down, now they're going to learn if you're at the North Pole, which way is south, well, every direction is south. Uh, they are able now to compare, I can add a second map to this, and compare the political relief to the land cover. I'll take this down and they can see how that will work. zoom at the same time. So you can see the political markings as well as that. Now if I decide to uh, get rid of some of these maps and just zoom in, I can zoom in as you would with Google Earth. And what I was going to do, but I want to be very quick here because I know we have a lot to do, was uh, you can zoom right into the Forbidden City, for example, and see how it is laid out. We're going to make the uh, point of geography and Chinese governance that the Forbidden City is deliberately aligned to face down the south. Um, also, the teacher may start marking this. And I'll talk about some of the other things this can do while we're trying to zoom in on this, working on this internet connection. Uh, the teachers will be able also to um, create custom PDFs and worksheets for their students. I turn this actually I can rotate the whole earth here, so it's actually proper north. See the forbidden city is rot oriented north to south because the emperor's power to radiate properly south was to create a prosperous and unified country. Uh, the teachers can create uh, custom PDFs, they can mark them with current events. You want to see what an oil spill is down in the Gulf, you can do that, print it out, hand it to the student, they can take it home. They can collaborate on projects as our technology gets better. Uh, submit digital assignments, uh, work with their peers along this way. Uh, also, the Atlas program that they have is integrated right into the smart board. The teacher can pull up the Atlas and mark everything up. This is the wrong one. And show the students the page that they're working on back at their seat. And with all the tools, pull up. For example, they can, they can mark things and without having to do that, just give you a sense that you can do all kinds of uh, things on this that you couldn't do with the old maps that most of us knew when we were students. Now, as we move out of grades five to eight, I'll just leave it there. I think we're, we're, we're done with a rough idea of it. Uh, we go to the high school where, of course, the content becomes uh, much more detailed. It reflects the demands placed on a mature learner. Uh, we will have the three mandated state courses. Freshman year is the second half of world history, so they'll pick up with what they did in grade eight. And 
As they move across the street, pick up about the year 1500. Uh, we start with bubonic plague. They didn't tend to like that. And then we move on to modern times. US 1 and US 2 are both mandated by the state. All courses are offered in a regular and honor setting. And for that junior year, we also offer an advanced place in US history for those students who excelled in uh, US history 1. We also have a wide range of electives multiple AP courses, uh, AP Human Geography, Government and Politics, uh, Macroeconomics. Uh, we also offer um, European History, Russian East Asian History, Sociology, the Modern Middle East Honors, Archaeology of the Ancient World. Uh, so we offer a, a lot to our students. This curriculum has all been aligned to the current standards and CPIs. And uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes. Um, Would you just be kind enough to uh, yeah, point out sure. the, the staff that assisted you on it? Sure. Um, they're all listed in the uh, curriculum, so if you'd like me to read out all the names, you can have to do that. Yes. That's yours. <laughs> I know, that mine's a little binder. Sorry about that. Um, That are here. <laughs> um, here. Yeah, if you all take stand and rise, please. And just, you know, like to recognize your blood. <laughs> Mr. Carney, and we had a lot of the teachers who helped out. Mr. Stoffers, they told me he was going to be here and he's on his way. He's here. He's here. He's here. Okay, thank you, Mr. <laughs> They did an awful lot of work, and I'm, and I'm very proud of their efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next presenters are Mrs. Osija and Mr. Ackerman with the technology curriculum. Mr. Ackerman will also remain for fine and performing arts and business. Thank you again. Thank you. curriculum K-6. to six. Uh, The most challenging part was developing the activities so that they seamlessly fit within what the teachers were doing. And um, that worked well with Mr. O'Dell. I had the opportunity to work with him because he's developing this curriculum that's rich with the technology, the Stratologica and the other um, parts of it that he's in, uh, using in the fifth grade and the sixth grade. So we worked pretty well together in developing some of our activities. Um, the standards for the elementary school are just 8-1 educational technology and 8-2 technology education. The educational technology is the part where, you know, when people say, oh, kids know everything about computers. Well, contrary to popular belief, they don't. They are easy, they want to experiment, and they have no problem trying things out, but we teach them the skills that make them savvy to use these tools in the way that they will need to use them in the future. The uh, spreadsheets using cells, margins, setting up columns. Things like that that they don't get to when they're playing the games that they do. They are good at that, but there's other, there's other things they need to know. The uh, technology education, I don't know if you've heard of the STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, this is that part of it, all right? The study of the technology and its effects on individual society and the environment. Like simple things like recycling, right? um, how things work. In 8.1, it's to make it simple. Make it, share it, find it, solve it, protect it, and use it. Those are the standards, and those are the simple ways of saying what we're going to be doing with the standard 8.1. 8.2, this is where it gets a little bit more into the science. It ties in great with their curriculum. They ask, they imagine, they create, they plan, and they develop what they see things being used for and being done. So I have a little video here. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it well. In this class, they were doing, um, they had to demonstrate Newton's laws of motion. So each child was doing a little experiment. So let's see. Right there, that's the whole idea. The boys experiment. 
that didn't work. And that's where the other ones jumped up. Well, maybe if we did this, put our hands under here, if we went. So that's it. That's it right there. You know, there was no computer involved, but the kids were thinking about how to help this boy make this project work. We're on a mission. We're on a mission to achieve effective technology integration, making the use of technology routine and transparent as it supports all our curriculum. So we're going to take administrators, parents, and teachers from this to this, <laughs> and that's a loving embrace. She's not looking to throw it out the window. It's a loving embrace. So that we can do this with our children, use the technology so that we can reach out to the world. I'd like to thank everyone who helped me with this, my committee, um, Mrs. Latka, Mrs. Rambaldi, Mrs. T uh, Tucci, Mr. Luzzi, Mrs. Adubato, she's a good sport with those pictures, um, Mrs. Leonard, um, Mrs. Francioso, Mrs. Clarko, thank you for letting me run this. Appreciate that. Mr. Barron, the Board of Education, for all your support. Because in the curriculum, we've written in all the things that you have uh, a lot of the money for, for our subscriptions, and that's all part of what we try to use with the curriculum. So thank you all. Thank you. Mine's a little longer, so I'm going to have to make the notes quite a bit. <coughs> Chris did a really good job of uh, reviewing all the technology. All the technology components. Uh, a little piece written. First of all, I'd like to thank all the members of the Board of Education, Mr. Zara, Ms. Francioso, Ms. Clarico, Ms. Clicho for all their support in this endeavor. I would also like to thank all the members of the business, creative arts, and fine arts departments for their hard work and extra hours. When we first be were given this task in September, I don't think that anyone could have envisioned the amount of time beyond the seven schedule articulation sessions that would be needed. Many of the staff members came in early, stayed late, gave up their lunch, and even took work home on the weekends to complete these manuals. Our mission was to review our curriculum and ensure alignment with the current core curriculum content standards, where we reviewed and modified our curriculum as needed. Because of the diversity of the department, our curriculum touches on many different standards and goes across the board addressing, in or in part, standards number one, visual and performing arts, number eight, technology, which Ms. Osicia talked about, 8.1 and 8.2, and standard number nine, 21st century life and careers, which includes 9.1, 21st century life and career skills, 9.2, personal financial literacy, 9.3, career awareness, exploration, and preparation, 9.4, career and, tech and technical education, 9.4 includes 16 career clusters, such as 9.4a, agriculture, food, and resources, 9.4b, architecture and construction. It goes on, there's 16 different ones, which we address pieces of all. Let me start by saying that by the nature of our subject matter, technology is infused into our curriculum each and every day. <coughs> we instruct on the use of the latest technology, and we utilize the latest technology in our instruction. Keeping in line with technology, that we use, in particular, Ms. Linda McDonald, our staff put together the following PowerPoint presentation to give everyone an idea of our offerings and sequence of study. <coughs> Business education is introduced at John H. Walker Middle School in the seventh grade as an elective, as part of an elective of four, four courses. Concepts of keyboarding and word processing, computer applications, <coughs> internet, tech, internet safety, and introduction to technology. Each class is one marking period in length. At the high school, at the high school, as you can see, we offer a wide variety of elective options for all standards starting in the 10th grade designed to meet a variety of interests. Upperclassmen at the high school are required to successfully complete one year of computer applications. Students entering the ninth grade next year 
will be required to complete one half year of computer applications and one half year of the newly mandated, state mandated financial literacy class. Options to meet these requirements are available, including a zero period offering and a special ed offering and an online offering. Popular electives offered include <coughs> digital photography, just idea of some of the things that the kids do. Also, I'd like to point out that every year we enter a contest that's sponsored by uh, Bill pa Congressman Bill Pascrell. It's the uh, Congressional Art Competition. This year we were lucky enough to Mr. Rogers came, Mr. and Dr. Reed came, and viewed the contest and we were lucky enough to have two first place winners, one in the, in the traditional category and one in the non-traditional category. This happens to be the non-traditional winner. These uh, works of art will hang in Pasqu the uh, Congressman Pascrell's office for one year in Patterson. We also offer digital photo uh, photography two multimedia class. One of the things that they cover in this class is a digital portfolio. And this is just a short clip of a digital portfolio pre uh, prepared by the students. Fundamentals of web design, business law, Sports and entertainment marketing, accounting, honors accounting, college accounting, <coughs> the newly created financial literacy class beginning next fall, international business practice firm, a class that we created and ran for the first time this year, turned out to be a very, very successful class. And finally, IT Essentials and Cisco Networking. All offerings are in alignment with the current New Jersey core curriculum content standards. Next one. Technical education, uh, creative arts, fine arts. As I stated before, our mission was to review the curriculum and ensure alignment with current New Jersey core curriculum content standards. Our task became even more difficult this year when mid-year they changed from the draft, which we were told to to use as a standard, and they had a finalized version, which turned out to be quite different from the original. So we had to go back and review and redo almost everything we had done. We reviewed and modified our curriculum as needed. The final results can be found in massive binders, as you can see here on the table, from the fine and technical education. We have the fine and creative arts department at the elementary and high schools were afforded a rare opportunity this year to get together in groups and share ideas and techniques which proved to be invaluable not only to the writing of the curriculum, but to create continuity between schools and ensure a consistent sequence of offerings starting at the kindergarten level and culminating in 12th grade. Because of the diversity of our department, our curriculum touches on many different standards as evidenced by the size of the curriculum binders that are on the table. We offer real world learning experiences for all students where academic standards are reinforced and students are able to apply what they have learned in real life situations using critical thinking skills. In keeping with the theme of uh, a presentation in line with of what we teach, Ms. Karen Van de Haye and Pete Behrens, who are both here tonight, put together a short video showcasing what we offer at the high school in this department. Hope you enjoy it. In seventh grade technology, students will develop technical sketching skills to design projects that apply engineering skills by building and testing structures and airplanes. In eighth grade, students and principals of technology will advance their understanding of how more complex technologies work. They will apply engineering principles when designing and building mechanical and electronic projects. Students will develop woodworking skills when building CO2 dragsters and then collect and graph the data. Metalworking is designed to introduce students to the basic skills, technique, procedures, and processes of metalworking, welding, and introductory machining by hands-on activities. Project development, materials, measuring, hand tools, machines, operations, and safety are covered as well. 
Maintaining equipment, tools, workstations, and workplace and shop to provide safe work environments is everyday procedures. Metal fabrication is, of course, which deals with more complex bench work, welding methods, machine operations, introductory and CNC, and basic construction technique. Students learn occupational safety, material selection, project development and construction, heat treating, consumer awareness, and career awareness. Metalworking Advanced is designed for students who wish to pursue more advanced metalworking activities. Students in electricity and electronics learn basic principles of electricity in their practical applications. It helps students acquire safe work habits and develop skills of using tools, measuring instruments, circuit types, components, and residential wiring concepts. Students will become familiar with the fine art of woodworking. They will use a variety of power and hand tools to create a multitude of projects ranging in difficulty from simple to complex. The student will be able to identify which machines are most appropriate for a particular operation while continually focusing on proper usage and safety. Students in technical drawing will be introduced to the techniques and procedures used by professionals in industry. By the use of professional quality tools, the student will gain proficiency in line quality, single view drawing, lettering, geometry and drafting, orthographic projections, pictorial drawing, and computer aided drafting. Furthering their education in residential architecture, students will learn about the planning, design, and construction of residential buildings. A complete set of plans will be produced for a one-story private residence, and a presentation model of the exterior will be constructed. By the completion of the third year program in civil architecture, students will have researched, designed, modified, and modeled a small-scale civil engineering project while working in a team atmosphere. Students' adherence to vocal levels and timelines are strictly enforced throughout the planning stages. studio remote production work enables students to learn through a true hands-on experience. Students in the program produce live news and sports campus studio programming aired on the local Cablevision, Verizon, and the closed circuit Channel 1 channel at the high school. utilize the studio production learning experience to continue broadcast communication studies through scholarship aid at some of the finest communication schools in the country. Good evening and happy new year. I'm Julie Zanielle. In the last little bustle of our guidance department, Ms. Stavilio has been busy adjusting to a new role as guidance team leader. Let's take it inside. Ms. Stavilio. Um, from the staff of NHS TV. In this segment of Question of the Week, we challenge the memories of faculty and students as a new decade is born. We asked, what is your most memorable moment in this past decade? <laughs> From Jamie Zickery and the staff of N uh, Raider Nation, I'm Angela Lambro. Thanks for watching. This past school year, students in the class of 2010 earned college credit at Ryder University in liaison with the curriculum offered in our TV Production 1 and 2 courses. Kindergarten in Grade 1. Students in Kindergarten in Grade 1 will receive an introduction to the basic elements of art and principles of design through art production. They will use a variety of mediums and application methods to create original works of art. For each assignment, students will be introduced to the basic verbal and visual art vocabulary associated with the mediums and methodologies being used. Students will be introduced to the work of artists from various historical periods and world cultures. They will be made aware of how these artists use the same elements of art and principles of design that they are learning. Grade 2, 3, and 4. As students move from grade 2 through grade 4, they should be developing an ability to identify, discuss, and apply the elements of art and principles of design to art productions. They will be able to appropriately utilize a variety of art mediums and application methods, and will begin to identify which mediums and tools are most appropriate for specific works of art. 
Students will continue to view and discuss works of art and should be able to form opinions about these works based on how the artist views the elements and principles they've been learning about. Six, students should be able to use what they have learned about the elements of art and principles of design to help them solve visual art problems. They will create works of art influenced by specific periods in art history and will begin to experiment with compositional approaches based on the distinctive characteristics of these artworks. Students will begin to recognize differences existing between artworks from various cultures, historical periods, and artistic genres. They will begin to compare and contrast these works based on the use of the elements of art and principles of design. Grade 7 and Grade 6. The program at John Walker Middle School has been refined to meet the needs of creative students with an interest in developing their art ability and improving their skill levels to an advanced degree. Sixth grade students who take an interest in applying for fine arts in seventh grade experience an array of challenges through hands-on projects, art history research activities, and weekly at-home drawing assignments to enhance their drawing vocabulary. Students participate in an array of activities including painting, ceramics, drawing, and sculpting, in which they incorporate various art elements and the principles of balance, harmony, unity, emphasis, proportion, and rhythm and movement in the creation of two- and three-dimensional artworks to express their creative ideas. Students also have the opportunity to show their work not only in the school setting, but locally in the community and through state and national competitions when they arise. The adventure continues in 8th grade with advanced arts where the program continues with accelerated work being the focus. Students solve hands-on visual problems which arise from learning about various genres of art, both traditional and contemporary. Students leave middle school with the knowledge of various art genres, command of the art elements and principles, and the ability to critique and analyze various pieces of artwork which prepare them for the high school level. Art Fundamentals offers an introduction to art for diverse students of all levels. Students will assimilate the visual world into a creative process by using basic art principles and elements of design. History, culture, and aesthetic responses will be introduced. Technical life skills introduced in this course will expose students to job opportunities in functional art beyond the art studio setting. Art 1 will advance using elements of design to explore value, scale, and linear perspective. The principal elements of design will also focus on composition. Multicultural symbolism, metaphor, and allegory are understood and created. Intensive color study, portraiture, and print process will be introduced and manipulated on a technical basis. Use of diverse mediums will be explored with an introduction to genres and historical art periods of the past, as well as contemporary artists of today. Art 2 scaffolds Art 1, expanding art genres and technical creation of observational work. Students understand and create visual communication through social and political symbolism. Students will produce original artworks in multiple mediums that demonstrate the mastery of visual literacy, methods, techniques, and cultural understanding. Utilitarian and non-functional forms are created in the studio as well as public art installations. Portraiture with intense color theory and design will sequence Art 2 students into the advanced level of art. Students participate in critiques and national competitions. In advanced art, students develop proficiency in art discipline-specific terminology and critical thinking skills. Students understand the relationship of art media, methodology, and art analysis that will enable the student to use expressionism, abstraction, realism, and naturalism, and other genre styles to convey ideas to the audiences. Technical career opportunities will be experienced in this course. Students will create portfolios and compete in a jury public art exhibition outside of the school environment. This rigorous college level class utilizes all the design elements, history, cultural genres, medium, art terminology, and technical proficiency. Students will complete an extensive portfolio of breadth and concentration to be submitted for AP examinations. 
Students are proficient in the ability to synthesize the physical properties, process, and techniques for visual communication in multiple art media, including digital technology. They can apply this knowledge with success to the creation of quality original artworks. Students' work is predominantly exhibited annually in college and national level competitions. I know it was long, but if, if you look at this and this and this, and this is what the department is responsible for. So it's quite big, quite extensive. In closing, I realize that funding is a big issue at the state right now. This year we have entered contests such as Best Buy Teach at 15 award contest, which uh, we received $1,500 for. We also continue to apply for Perkins funding, which helps our technical classes. In fact, a good example right here is uh, probably Angelo Lambertino, probably one of the best bowlers in the state, and he's <laughs> using a camera that we use Perkins funding to purchase, and we hope to get another one next year. Again, I'd like to thank the Board of Education for the opportunity to create this and to have the uh, department work on all of the curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. It might have been long, but it was uh, extremely impressive. So thank you very much. Well done. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes, you, um, you mentioned online offerings. Could you tell me more about that? We have a computer applications class that's offered zero period and it's done online. Students meet once, twice a week, they get a certain amount of information, then they can complete the rest of the assignment at home, online, submit everything online to the instructor, and then they will come in again the next week for a period or two, zero period, and then complete the assignment at home. So it's kind of a 25-75 um, split. Is that the only course in the uh, high school that has that? That's the only one that we offer. Next year, I hope to do it for our computer apps and personal finance class. So we will expand that part. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to point out that uh, Mr. Ackerman, as, as the years have gone by, in recent years, he's assumed three departments. And we'd like to thank you, as well as the High School 504 coordinator. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my next introduction. Just before, um, Mr. Superintendent, before we, we go, the people outside want to come in. There's plenty of uh, seating inside. There's people in the uh, hallway. Great. Thank you. And, and uh, it goes without saying that everyone, administrators and staff who worked on these curriculums, did an outstanding job and have worked very, very hard. I'd like to point out to Ms. Melnick, who's head of physical education at the high school, I will introduce her. And anyone who was at the high school graduation, uh, she coordinates every aspect of that graduation. So when every student comes, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, and they pull out their name and they have the diploma, it all works. And we, she's been doing it for many years, we thank you. This is Ms. Mellick, we'll talk about physical education. And health. Yeah, and health. Good evening to Mr. Zara, Mrs. Francioso, Mr. Riley, and the Board of Education. First of all, I'd like to thank the health and physical education teachers that worked on these curriculums. Sorry to say they've had different uh, commitments tonight. I would also like to thank Mrs. Gina Russell for her knowledge in formatting the tables, <clears throat> organizing information. I'm going to drink water here. Organizing the information, laying some pages, which was very helpful <clears throat> when I was finishing the uh, curriculum. The PowerPoint presentation will be a brief synopsis of what we did this past year. As you can see on the uh, slide, the six standards for health and physical education are 2.1 is wellness, 2.2 is integrated skills, 2.3 drugs and medicines, 2.4 human relationships and sexuality, 2.5 motor skill development, and 2.6 is fitness. Just up, right? Okay. The objective for us was to review, rewrite, and align the Nutley curriculum with the New Jersey core curriculum, curriculum content standards. The K-6 physical education uh, was led by Mrs. Maria Dow, who was a facilitator. Uh, Ms. Robin Powell was the K-12 health uh, education facilitator. 
and I was the facilitator for 7 through 12 of uh, physical education. Uh, the, the first strand I'm going to talk about is the 2.5 motor skill development. As you can see, under each strand there are CPIs. The CPIs are core uh, curriculum progress indicators. Curriculum progress indicators. Okay, so under motor skill development, you have movement skills and concepts, 2.5A. You have 2.5B, which is strategy. 2.5C, which is sportsmanship, rules, and safety. And then the next standard is fit fitness and physical activity. <coughs> and as you can see to the right, it says compare the short and long term impact on wellness associated with physical activity. That's by the end of 12th grade, students should be able to compare and contrast the short and long term impact on wellness associated with physical activity. And what do we do in uh, the high school? We do fitness days. A lot of students don't like fitness days, but <clears throat> we do fitness days once a week. Once a week, we ask them to run if they can. They uh, usually walk. We had a fitness unit during the health curriculum, but now that will be changing to the physical education curriculum. Uh, this is an activity pyramid. Usually you see a food pyramid. This is an activity pyramid for the five to nine-year-olds and uh, 10 year olds This is from NASPA. NASPA is the National Association for Sport Phys and Physical Education. Uh, level one, walk to school, work in the yard. Level two, your aerobic activities, running, jumping, biking. Level three, flexibility, muscle strengthening. Level four, avoid long periods of inactivity, and then rest a little bit. So that's for grades, uh, I mean, ages five and nine, 10 and up. Um, the fitness and physical activity for the younger uh, students, K through two, grade level K through two, eight fundamental motor skills that all students should possess. They should be able to throw, kick, run, jump, catch, strike, hop, and skip. Without these basic fundamentals, they cannot go any further in life as far as uh, selecting a sport or any other type of lifetime uh, fitness activity. So as you can see in the, uh, I didn't write all of these down because they do have a lot in the uh, curriculum, uh, just some of the activities that the elementary school physical education teachers do. They do run, they skip, they hop, they gallop, they bear walk, they crab walk, they back pedal. And that's just a few of the things that the uh, students do in K through 2. The health standard, Ms. Powell could not be here tonight, so I'm going to give you a little concept on the health uh, standard. The health standards include wellness. Uh, that's uh, nutrition, for instance. Um, some medicines, integrated skills, that's character development, decision making, drugs and medicines, ATODs, alcohol, tobacco, other drugs, and last one's human relationships and sexuality. Uh, I selected the one on wellness standard 2.1. Underneath the wellness is 2.1a, personal growth and development. 2.1b is nutrition. 2.1c is diseases and health conditions and 2.1D is safety, 2.1E is social and emotional health. I'm going to talk about 2.112D6 to the right, and why am I going to talk about that? Well, I want to thank Mr. Catchbone and the administration for giving us the funding to um, certify all the health and physical education teachers. In order to teach um, CPR to the students, which is going to be done uh, by the senior year, uh, in September, all students will be um, taking CPR, first aid, and AED. So all the health and physical education teachers have to get certified. Not just a certificate, but a certificate of instruction. So CPR instructor certificate. So all the staff and Mrs. Choppy got certified. So we will be able to teach this in September. So seniors will be uh, taking this uh, course, besides all the others. Our strengths as, as a school district are based on uh, the fact that everyone works together. I'd like to thank Mr. Clitcho, Mrs. Clerico for leading us through the process of curriculum revision. Uh, the community, the Board of Education, and administration, everybody works together. I think that's why we're a success here. So thank you very much. Next, Mrs. Napolitano will speak uh, to the Gifted and Talented Program.
Sara, members of the board. The purpose of this evening's presentation is, is to formally introduce the gifted and talented curriculum guide. Um, with your permission, I just feel like I'd be more comfortable sitting and being able to watch this. Too. Now that we have completed three years of the program, I also thought it would be appropriate to share with you who we are, what we've accomplished, and why. First, we'll start with the why. Oh, okay. This is doing, sorry. Uh, I don't know why it's doing all these. Like, okay, got it. Good. New Jersey Administrative Code 688 was enacted into law on June 1st, 2005. Known as the Gifted and Talented Law, the key components of this regulation are all public schools must have a board approved Gifted and Talented program. Multiple criteria must be used to identify students for the program, and appropriate educational services must be provided beyond the regular curriculum. Now, this all actually came about because of research that was conducted by the U.S. Department of Education. They found that higher functioning students were not being challenged to master more complex material. They concluded that children who exhibit high performance capabilities <coughs> require services beyond the regular curriculum. Hence, the need for differentiated instruction, which happens to be our first goal. Our second goal was to implement a model developed by researchers called cluster grouping. In this model, high achieving students have the opportunity to work with students of similar ability. Now, there are several reasons for doing this, the, not the least of which is our third goal, which is to ignite enthusiasm for learning. We do this by offering hands-on, student-centered activities in our curriculum. Like these students who are pictured here, who simulated the engineering process of creating a structure from design to blueprint to the final construction. Here in the picture, they proudly show off their partially completed geodesic dome. Or these sixth graders who are examining a staged crime scene, recording evidence, and will further investigate the crime through forensics testing. I think one of the most valuable experiences that a student gains from our program is the opportunity to collaborate with others to solve complex issues and problems. The problem actually that they had to solve here in our invention class was how to create an original invention. How does an invention happen? Where does it come from? What is the process? Well, that is exactly what 32 fourth graders did as they participated in our district invention fair. Now, pictured are a few examples of the prototypes they came up with. At the top, a student is demonstrating how his boot light works to an interested viewer. The bottom left, in the bottom left-hand photo, that's Isabella, and she's actually trying to convince Mr. Zara that no trip to the movie would be complete without an original movie bell. You know, the one that can hold your, your snacks and your popcorn and soft drink and candy. In the bottom right photo, okay, now you've heard of a drop leaf table where, well here a student is actually explaining the merits of her original drop leaf chair to Mrs. Francioso. We also thank you for being our special gifts that day. Another one of our courses is called Playwriting. Pictured here are the 2010 New Jersey Young Playwrights Festival winners, who also happen to be four Nutley students. Their play was a winning entry in the festival and was performed by professional actors at the Kane University stage. Now, those are the Spring Garden Playwrights in the front row. And in the back row, not as clear, are the actors that actually <coughs> took the parts in the production at the, at the stage. It, it was such an exciting experience for the students and their parents and the rest of the audience. We also had an exciting day on May 26th. That was the day that the Nutley debate team made up of gifted and talented students from Nutley took the New Jersey Consortium's debate tournament by storm. 
Pictured here are the team members holding their team plaque as well as the fourth, fifth, and first place trophies that they won there. As well as our identified component, the Nutley Gifted and Talented Department has developed a comprehensive program in school-wide enrichment. Based on a model by Dr. Joseph Renzulli, school-wide enrichment is designed to reach a broader segment of the population by providing academic opportunities for all students. Now, let's take a look at one of our most popular forensics interpretive reading. In this program, students select and interpret a piece of prose or poetry presented to an audience of judges and parents and school members. Now, the interesting thing about this is that students can progress in this activity from learning how to effectively present a selection to performing it at a school tournament as a part of a team to having the opportunity to compete at the county or state level. Now, in this case, here we have pictured the first place Essex County Forensics Champion, who also happens to be a Nutley student. There is a complete list of all these courses, these enrichment activities in our curriculum guide, with further details of our student goals, our identification process, and our philosophy. On behalf of the Gifted and Talented Department, I would just like to thank all of you, Mr. Zara and the board, for giving me an opportunity to share this with you tonight. Especially, I would like to take the opportunity to thank Mrs. Francioso. Three years ago, she had a vision and a belief that this district was ready to embrace a program for gifted and talented students and that it would be a success. And you were right, Mrs. Francioso, thank you so much. I also would like to thank Mrs. Clerico on behalf of the other teachers and myself for her enthusiastic leadership in this program this year. And of course, again, thank you for your time and attention. I leave you with this quote by Carl Rogers, which is one of my favorite quotes. For every gifted child who is not allowed to reach his or her potential, there is a lost opportunity that child might eventually have composed a concerto, found a cure for a terminal disease, or developed a formula for world peace. Wasting the potential of a gifted mind is reckless for a society in desperate need of creativity and inventiveness. Thank you. Start by thanking Mr. Sarah, Mrs. Francioso, the board, Mr. Uh, Catchbone, and Mrs. Clark for all your help. Right around January, when we switched from the 2004 standards to 2009, so that was interesting. Um, I'd also like to thank my, uh, my peers, Mrs. Coco, Mrs. Mr. Morrow, Mrs. Mitchell, Mrs. Skirbo, and Mrs. Holubra. Um, our mission in the guidance department is to facilitate an academic and career, social, and personal growth of our students. The counselors interact on individual, small groups, large groups with the students, um, sometimes as small as a one-on-one -on -one basis if the student comes in with a problem, or when we're pulling down the entire senior class to discuss something with them, whether it's based on the scholarships or based on um, college, the college search or the application process. We are constantly collaborating with our peers, the child study team, the final board committee, our SEC, so it's a very collaborative process in guidance office. Our philosophy, we recognize the uniqueness and personal growth of each, personal worth of each student. We should strive to assist them in becoming effective students, productive workers, uh, responsible citizens. We remain uh, sensitive to all their personal issues, um, diversity, um, eth uh, ethical, cultural, social, and um, uh, sexual needs. We are always supporting the school's mission to enhance the learning process, assisting students to make informed decisions, and be productive citizens. 
The next two slides are still in sequence. The guidance office is a very busy uh, setting. Um, from September all the way through to August, councils are in, meeting with students. Whether we're meeting with the individual uh, support staff in the high school, with the students individually, we're constantly looking to how we can assist the students, whether it's encouraging them to take the ASVAB, which is the armed service vocational assessment battery, whether we're reviewing PSAT scores, encouraging them to take the SAT, whether we are hosting a instant decision day where we have seven or eight colleges and we're you know, getting the whole application process going, whether we're doing career exploration, is a very busy place. And when we approach <coughs> senior year, that is where it's all coming to a culmination. So it, it's a very busy office and the students are always in, it's a revolving door. Um, we kind of touched upon some of the same areas as Mr. Ackerman did. Uh, we focused on 9.2, 9.3, and 9.4, which is the fina personal financial liter literacy, the career, career awareness and exploration, and then also 9.4 are the career clusters. And because there is an overlap with a lot of the departments, a lot of what we do supports what the other uh, departments are doing, whether it's history, math, science, or the business of creative arts, or music departments, we're kind of a support team for them. Uh, what I've done is I've taken one standard, 9.3, and this one, it's very hard for me to read on the screen. Um, your career preparation requires purposeful planning based on research, self-knowledge, and informed uh, choices. Again, we have the essential questions, the enduring understandings, where we're trying to get, in this case, the students to realize that <coughs> a job, a career, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. Um, students in this society are, are Adults in society may not have one career for their life. They may progress, they may go back to school. There's room for personal growth within a field and exploring beyond a certain field. Um, skills and activities, and we're meeting out with them one-to-one, -one, small groups, large groups. We're integrating technology with a lot of what we do, and I'm gonna show you Naviance, which, again, is a wonderful tool that's without the support of Mr. Zaris, Francis, so we would not be able to do as much as we're doing now. We've, are, we've taken Navion to the next level just this past spring where we've tried to go as paperless as possible, where we're trying to get the students on board with Navion. The staff is, so we're getting the students on board and the parents on board. That's where Navion will really take us kind of into the next, uh, the next century, so to speak. Um, and can I, can I uh, Two ways to get onto Navion. One, you can just bookmark it, but for students that have a bookmark it, if you go right to the Nutley High School website, there's a link to Naviance, which many parents do not know. Um, every September, we meet with the freshmen, and we register them, Naviance Family Connection, send them a password, we send reminders home in our guidance gazette, and not everyone is as registered as we would like. Students need an email. If they don't have an email, we can just register them with a password. Um, I created a fake student, since all the information under each student is personal. When a student logs on to Navion's Family Connection, this is what they see. A parent, if they have multiple children in the building, has a pull-down menu, and they can choose whatever child they're looking to find information about. Now, one of these pages is actually something I started creating about a week ago. Um, when you work, come on, you see a, a page, you see links to all the websites. We have financial aid websites down here. We have websites that link them to College Board and SAT, uh, New Jersey Transfer, MyMajors.com, Fair Test, which is all of the schools that are SAT optional. Um, and then at the very top is one of the new ones I started working on last week. Uh, we have a, a graph for you know, the difference between SAT versus ACT. And this one is kind of on your construction. There's a lot of things that aren't 100% here, but I just figured I would put it on for tonight. This is a page I created for vocational training. And again, it just gives the students another link to information uh, that is out there for them. Um, and everything that is on this page that is, is a, a live link. When you go further into Naviance, you can go into the careers. And this is something that could actually be used within the classrooms in the different departments. Um, this student, Jane Smith, I made her interested in uh, athletic training and physical therapy, that's kind of a hot field for the students nowadays. Um, when you click on something, one of the links, athletic trainers, it gives you a job description. 
It gives you all these tabs up here, the knowledge and the skills that they need, tasks and activities you need on the job, and then again going into personal financial literacy, understanding of what you could work, what you can earn in this field from state to state. Scrolling down to the bottom on my first page here, um, you have your related occupations, um, and then in many cases they give you a video where it explains the field to the students. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a very important tool that we use in the office. The athletic trainer. This member of the team keeps players in top shape. The most important part of the job is helping athletes prevent and recover from sports injuries. Working closely with team doctors, trainers ramp injuries and supervise physical. And then the other tab in here, colleges, students that are interested in starting the college application process or the college research process can start as early as freshman year. Uh, this is available to all students from freshman year on. And as a student becomes interested in the school, they can add it to a list of schools that they're interested in. Um, so I'm going to click on Marist here for a second. And what it does, it links you right to the school's website. It gives you uh, information about the school itself. It shows you the history from Nutley High School. So it stores data for us. So it helps us to uh, give the students a good idea of where they may fit academically and socially. So it really is an endless uh, tool of information. So this is something that aids us in our department. And when you look at the career clusters, it can also help the other departments in high schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of sending them to the students and to the parents, and when you you can see that every student in the high school is logged on and, and does have a, a password, and the parents you can see who's highlighted, mm -hmm. who is active and who is not, and many of them aren't, and it's a shame because we send out a lot of information. Obviously, um, sometimes I you know whether it's a community service project, whether it's you know coming to the college fair, there's a lot of information that we do send to the parents, and they're not getting it all. Electronically, can we do anything um, beyond what you're doing to get the word out to the parents? Mrs. Huey has attempted to help me with the PTO. She's put it in her newsletter. I went to the May PTO meeting and spoke to the small group of parents that were there. They were all excited. Some of them were, were parents of sophomores and juniors and were quite upset that their freshmen didn't tell them two or three years prior what it was about. It's and. It just shows you how little sometimes the parents are actually reading the things that we're sending them because it's in every single guidance gazette issue to call your child's guidance counselor, get your password, get registered because it, they're missing a lot. Since obviously we're all PTO reps, mm -hmm. it would be. There's no also idea. a component that can go down to lower levels. Yeah. This can be introduced as low as fifth and sixth grade. So if we get the parents on board at the, low, at the elementary levels where they're sometimes a little bit more visible, with the PTO, then it kind of can trickle all the way up to the high model. school. Yeah, and it would, we, we could probably the career component could definitely be used in fifth and sixth grade, and without a doubt in seventh and eighth grade as well. Okay. Then you need to need to make sure that information is, is coming down. Yeah, we try. Us. We're trying no, our best to get it out there. coming down to the board members because we but, have a PTO yeah. meetings. We can we can certainly push that out there. I'm sure Mr. Rogers will uh, include it in his. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that would definitely help us help out a great Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in response to Charlie, from my PTO days, there was also the individual school announced yeah. that had an uh, email service that went out to the parents that signed up for it. And I don't know that I've gotten anything from the high school this year, so I know 
most of the PTOs utilize the PTO and now is that maybe we could get our principals to make more use of this school and now. It's just such a good asset that we could be missing a little bit. Yeah. Maybe we could do a segment on our uh, TV show. Something on the TV show. You know, they have to watch the board meetings. Let me get the word out. So I agree with you. Mrs. Spinell? Very sorry for uh, omitting you from the official uh, agenda, but uh, welcome. We'll make it very quick, I promise. Okay. Mrs. Spinell is joined by Mr. Janice. Um, we, um, as you know, are the elementary SACs, and we have devised a uh, resource curriculum book as well as to redo the curriculum, to rewrite it, or create it actually, because there was no SAC curriculum. Our curriculum is aligned with the New Jersey Core Standards, which focus on health and wellness and the 21st uh, century uh, life skills. The standards start at 2.1 down to 2.4, as well as 9.1 mm -hmm. on up. Um, and these address social, emotional, and academic needs of the students in the elementary level. We have, um, each month has been themed, which is in line with the six pillars of character. In addition to every month, in this particular one, we're showing you the month of October. You do have this book, we just wanted to present it. The month of October, which is a very big month for us, which is Red Ribbon and Violence Awareness, as well as bullying. <coughs> we address all of these areas in this month. We have um, presentations that are done at each ele elementary level. This ties in with the report, I believe, that needs to be sent to the state every year on, on what we do for Violence Prevention Month. Um, and the lessons are provided for both the primary and the upper elementary level classes. In addition, on each one, at the end of it, there's a bibliography of stories, novels, and websites that may be utilized by the teachers for character educate that contain character education themes. And in line with these, um, the standards, we are um, assisting the students to um, develop personal awareness and personal um, explore personal goals, which is part of the standards that um, we are addressing here. Do you want to talk about some of that? All of our standards, 2.1 through 2.4, focus on being um, emotionally sound and um, communication and relationships, which is what we focus on with the younger students. Also, 9.1, 21st century life skills, um, touches on how to function successfully as global citizens. So when we send our students out there, we want them to be able to interact with others and communicate well with others as fully functioning human beings. Mm -hmm. That's our goal, yes. And we provide a comprehensive and developmental guidance in the counseling program that impacts all of the students K to six from kindergarten to sixth grade. We are there to help them learn to work and to work in the 21st century. Again, as I said to you before, the um, academic year is planned out here. September is getting to know you. We have activities for the children to get to know each other throughout the classes, as well as learning the goals of, of the teachers, as well as the school. October, again, as we said, and then the six pillars of character go on. Alcohol awareness is in the month of April. Um, and the month of June is transitions which we work, um, I actually did this this year with the sixth graders, the transition from the sixth to the seventh grade. We had a very short, small curriculum. I went into the classroom with the sixth graders and it was really wonderful to get them ready for the middle school and let them know what to expect going forward. Um, do you want to do this one? <laughs> um, just a little bit about what the SAC, SAC counselors, what we believe, what's our mission. Um, we really, we work collaboratively with the students, parents, the teachers. Um, we want to remove the barriers that may impede any kind of student achievement. We want them to be able to come to school, focus on their schoolwork, um, and help to remove anything that may be standing in their way emotionally. Um, we go into the classrooms, we deliver guidance lessons, um, we do conflict resolution, we focus on respect for each other. Small group, in, small group instruction, as well as one-to-one -one counseling for issues that may relate to, um, there may be issues in the family, there may be a death, there may be there's various things, anxiety, whatever we can do in addition to being an outside resource for parents. You know, we're not a therapeutic, obviously a therapeutic com um, community, but we, we will give outside referrals for the students also 
in addition to the lessons, as you said, in some of the classrooms. Um, and we, um, you know, focus on having a positive attitude. We want all our students to um, think positively, and um, hopefully we are a resource to help them with that as they go about their day as elementary school children. And just in closing, you know, um, as I said, we, the curriculum is in line with the standards of the state. We totally feel that children have the dignity and, and worth of human beings. They learn best when they feel good about themselves and others around them and understand their feelings and they can better control them and that's part of between the health, the health curriculum and, and, and what we're doing, working with them to learn these triggers and the barriers they may face and helping them to make more responsible choices and how we shape them from this level and bringing them up to the seventh and eighth and, and they're on, we're hoping that it will continue throughout. Start young yes. and try to shape their attitudes right away. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Great. Riley, uh, I'd like to advance a, an idea based on what I've seen tonight and I spoke to Mr. Zara about some time ago. It's a taxpayer's tour of the Melody Schools to include the extraordinary work and accomplishments that we have witnessed this evening. I can tell you, I got quite an education tonight. And I believe a taxpayer's tour of our school district will let the investors, the taxpayers of our township know that they are investing their dollars wisely, that there is something very substantial and good being accomplished in this school district. So, Mr. Zara, if we could talk about that uh, and perhaps set up such a tour uh, maybe this school year, and I would ask my colleagues on the board to join in the discussion. Yeah, we could uh, actually discuss that later on in the new business uh, in more detail. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes, just one question. I, I know you had talked about starting younger, and you talked about going six to seven. Do you do you start first grade, second grade? Do you do you talk about bullying, which obviously absolutely. is a major concern? Absolutely, kindergarten. Absolutely. Okay. Usually, in, in the beginning of the school year, I do go down and try and introduce myself to the newer students. Obviously, in kindergarten, mm -hmm. I have been. I currently work with Mrs. Clarigo and Mrs. Stell at Lincoln and Spring Garden School. And they have been very supportive in allowing me to go in, and, and we go in and we do things when problems arise. But we try and make ourselves very, very visible to the students in the school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tanaka. Um, when we first began the new uh, year under the new board, uh, just about two months ago, I put forward a uh, five-point plan, and the first uh, item on that five-point plan was a three-year academic plan uh, that I asked the superintendent to put together. And it kind of, kind of ties in perfectly tonight with all the uh, new curriculum changes, and at this time I'd like to uh, have the superintendent to present that to the board. To the board. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. In, in researching uh, eight characteristics of excellent schools, high expectations for every student, strong parental and community support, a rigorous and relevant curriculum with formative and summative assessment in place, sufficient resources to help all students achieve, safe, healthy, and supportive learning environments in each and every classroom in particular and throughout the schools in general. Schools and classrooms equipped for teaching and learning with 21st century learning tools. Highly qualified teachers in each and every classroom and strong principals. I believe we have those. And certainly we can do better. While my 10 goals are not dramatic alone, when put together I believe they, these initiatives, coupled with our revised curriculum, will raise student achievement. Mr. Weitmeister? Goal one, to create a culture that makes academic success for all students a core value of the school district. Each and every day, we have to remind ourselves and be reminded that we have to have high academic standards and we can't deviate from this. And we do expect and we must ensure that all students can learn. Goal two, along with the, something along the lines that Mr. Rogers mentioned, develop an exit survey for graduating seniors to assess the school district's effectiveness with its clients 
and also a survey randomly around the community to determine what people, the citizens, the parents think regarding the job we're doing. And gathering that data and doing something with it, addressing it. Three, complete revision of the K-12 curriculums make certain that is implemented beginning September 2010. In conjunction with the newly revised curriculum, we will create a bank of exemplar strategies, units, and lessons aligned to the new core curriculum content standards. Goal four, require and provide continued professional development opportunities to promote high achievement in students and staff. Goal five, review the evaluation process for non-tenured teachers and create an effective mentoring program for new professional staff. Six, make a decision regarding the implementation of full day kindergarten for September 2010. Goal seven, work cooperatively with stakeholders to strengthen support systems to enhance success in schools. This is a wonderful community. Many organizations and many individuals are highly motivated to support our schools and help our schools and our students. And I think we have to take these support organizations that provide parents and community members the opportunity to become involved, welcome them, and make sure that we formalize and maximize their contributions. Continuing, complete all school construction and provide a safe, clean learning environment to, student, to support the education mission of the district. I believe everybody here understands what we've gone through over the last few years with construction. It's been ongoing, it's touched every building, uh, we have tried to minimize the disruptions, but certainly when you have major school construction while schools are in session, it has an impact. I believe that we're all looking forward to the end of this construction and getting back to normal. And of course, newly uh, uh, renovated schools. And uh, goal nine, testing. It's part and parcel of everything we do. Bring every resource together in a coordinated effort to address standardized testing, including basic skills classes, inclusion classes, HESPA prep course similar to the SAT prep course we have, continuity of construction for uh, New Jersey ESC and HESPA, lunch and learn programs focusing on writing and math strategies, differentiated instruction and performance assessment, continue early intervention with programs such as Wilson Reading, uh, Everyday Math and Simple Math, create a bank of strategies, units, and lessons aligned to the New York Newport Curriculum Context Standards to be utilized by all staff members. And finally, require greater accountability from all administrators to ensure progress towards these goals and successful outcomes. Separately, they are not remarkable. Together, I think they, they bring focus and energy and combined resources to bear to carry through the educational mission that we have and also to make sure that we take the curriculums that our professionals have worked so hard on for the last year and implement them and of course make sure that we continue to deliver quality education. This is the first blush, if you will, of, of the plan. Certainly working with the academic committee, working with our coordinators, working with Mrs. Grancioso and our principals, we will continue to add, refine, tweak, and make sure that these changes are, are instilled in every teacher, every staff member, every administrator as we move forward. And, uh, Certainly this is the first presentation, but after we have an opportunity to talk to the board about these, we will, we will finalize them, revise them, and then put them up on our website. Thank you, Mr. Biden. Any questions? Sorry. Yeah, I'd like to suggest something that I suggested once before and got a pretty negative response, but uh, I'd like to suggest it again. And I think we should uh, consider a program that will help parents to help their children learn. I think you could have Socrates teaching, and if you don't have parental support and the help of parents, it generally doesn't work out that well for the kids. I think we should look into uh, providing a program where the parents can come and get help so that they can help their children. I think we should add that to this program. Right. Correspondence? No correspondence. Superintendent's report? Yes, let me uh, just uh, reach for that, Mr. Riley. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I you know, first of all want to thank Mrs. Francioso, Mrs. Clerk, and Mr. Colicchio for uh, really shepherding this curriculum revision through the school year. I'd also like to thank Mr. Viamaisa. He's on call, it seems, 24-7, 
never says no, and always gathers all of the information and puts it together in a format that is presented to the public this evening. I'd like to thank him because he certainly does work very, very, very hard. He's a resource not only to us, but to every teacher in the city in the district, so we thank you. Uh, I'm asking for a special meeting. I don't know what everybody's schedule is for July 12th. We have not returned the non-tenure teachers. It is my plan to review that with the uh, personnel committee and uh, present those non-tenure teachers to the board of approval on July 12th. Uh, interestingly enough, I was interviewed with Channel Time News, Brendan Flanagan, uh, which is not very, very remarkable, but the information was. She was doing a story on teacher attendance. And uh, the reason she called not being interviewed is we had the best teacher attendance in the area. And statistically, the inner city averages about 7% absenteeism. Very good school district, she informed me, average about 2% absenteeism. We were 0.9. Essentially, if you take every staff member and multiply it by 180 school days, we had 81,000 individual days of work. In those 81,000 individual days of work, we had 592 absences. That's remarkable. And I was very pleased and I'm very happy to report that. Additionally, we hear a great deal about students leaving the Nutley School District after they graduate from middle school. Of approximately 360 students who were promoted from Franklin, I'm sorry, Walker Middle School, 16 students opted not to attend Nutley High School. 16 out of approximately 360. I don't think that's any uh, huge spike. I think it's pretty consistent, perhaps even a little lower. June events uh, that we, we've all experienced, 15 were the elementary academic boards, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, elementary uh, graduation of the academic boards and scholarships at the high school. The 17th was the preschool graduation at Lincoln. The 21st was the kindergarten. 22nd, Walker Middle School, the uh, 23rd, uh, I'm sorry, 26 also elementary schools and the 23rd high school graduation. I'd like to thank everybody on the board who attended so many graduations. It's a culmination of a wonderful school year, and your presence was noticed and greatly appreciated. And finally, uh, after uh, a, a great deal of work, on the 30th this Wednesday, we will be meeting with the uh, county business administrator and county learning specialist for our six-month QSAC review, and we presented our curriculum to them this Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zara. Uh, board Secretary of the Yes. Yes. Um, regarding the 16 students that have opted to leave the district, are there plans to actually have exit interviews with their students? Uh, Mr. Klitschow and Donitz from the middle school actually conducted those, and I have every destination. Um, some are relocated, but some have opted for private or parochial school for a variety of reasons. Uh, some, for example, their parents have gone. Uh, they think there's athletic game. There's a number of reasons, but I certainly can break that out when Mr. Klitsch is helping me. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah, you. But 16, I don't think, is a very, very large number out of 360. But thank you. No, I appreciate that. And if I may add one thing, Mr. Riley, uh, I, I made this note. With the tragedy that occurred in Central Park, with the tree branch killing the young child, uh, it's very important that we have Mr. Nicoletti and I will ask Commissioner Tucci to give us assistance with Shade Tree to uh, look at all of our trees on our school property between now and September and make an assessment if we have any branches that should be attended to. Thank you. Thank you. Sammy? At the May 10th uh, board meeting, the board passed a resolution regarding one of our construction projects in particular the high school electrical work. And in that resolution, we had to award the bid to the second lowest bidder because the initial bidder who was originally awarded the contract had rescinded their bid. In doing so, under the direction of our construction attorney, uh, he declared the original contractor in default of its obligations to execute the contract and the board authorized him to proceed against the contractor's bid bond. So I just would like to inform the board as well as the public that we did receive a check this week from IDJ Construction in the total amount of their bid bond, which was $20,000. In addition to that, 
Uh, in the middle of last week, we had a visit from. Can I yes, you can. Just tell everyone what the differential was between the uh, second bid and the uh, first bid and the low bid versus that twenty thousand dollars that we recruited. The original bid was for $779,425, and the bid we actually awarded to the second contractor was $1,071,400. On Wednesday, June 23rd, we had a visit from the De De Department of Treasury Division of Public Contracts, Equal Employment Opportunity Compliance, and an investigator came to the district. He spent the entire day with uh, various members of the business office, as well as Mr. Nicolette, reviewing all the contracts that the district has authorized, as well as all purchases in excess of $29,000 to any single vendor during the 2008-2009 and 2009-2010 school year. Uh, he was looking for bid advertisements, mandatory affirmative action language, contract compliance issues, um, and needless to say, my office was running at high speed that day to get him all the information that he required, and I appreciate all of their efforts. Um, we do have some issues which we are resolving, and we will be receiving a report from that office with the status of his review. Thank you, Ms. Hammonds. Uh, any committee reports? Yes, Mr. Riley, uh, health and fitness. Uh, Mrs. Russo and I will be meeting with the mayor tomorrow to discuss some health-related programs that we would like to uh, advance in this district this coming year. In addition to that, you know, we have a a real fine foundation called the Geltrude Foundation right here in Nutley. It's one of the great things about this town. Uh, they have a basic uh, curriculum on melanoma and we'll be meeting, when I say we, Mrs. Russo and I will be meeting with the superintendent to discuss the possibility of inclusion of this uh, uh, lesson on a much needed lesson, may I add, on melanoma poisoning in our health curriculum classes. So uh, that's our health and fitness report. No, oh, one more thing. I'm yes. sorry. The New Jersey School Boards Association. Uh, I'm beginning to receive some uh, mail from them regarding some legislation that's going to be affecting school districts, and I will pass these on to the rest of the board each time I get them. There is uh, two important bills we need to keep an eye on. One is a bill that will require school board members to undergo criminal history background checks and would disqualify members convicted of any crime that would disqualify a person from public school employment. That's not too problem problematic. We probably won't all agree with that. But here's a bill that could have a chilling effect on volunteers. The Assembly Education Committee has released a bill which calls for criminal background check checks on all school volunteers. Now, this has been a a, 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 it's been a discussion about this, I know, at PTO meetings, where if a mother wants to come to lunch and volunteer to keep an eye on the children, will she be required to get fingerprinted and will she be required to submit to a criminal background check? Right now, that answer is in limbo. So this is a bill we have to keep an eye on, and it's something that, as a board, in the future, I think we need to discuss whether we're going to support that bill or not. Thank you. Any other committee reports? Seeing none. I'll come to the floor for our meeting where we allow members of the public to address the board. In this section, we allow questions and comments, only the resolutions, the rest, and the agendas. Board regula regulations allow 20 minutes for these communications. Each person shall be limited to three minutes. We ask you to stay within a requirement. Speakers may speak only once. <coughs> After others uh, wishing to speak on the topic of uh, all statements will be directed to me as chairperson and we may address the board members individually. Well, please be reminded that your statement is too likely, personally directed, abuse of obscene, relevant, or redundant, the participation may be terminated. Please remember to always state your name and address each time. Address the board will the first person to step forward and wishes to speak. 
Anyone on resolution item zone? Good evening, Mr. President. Alan Thomas, 108 McKinley Street, here in Mr. President, I will make a few questions, if I may, regarding the contract with Mrs. Yeaman. The employment contract, which is Schedule H. I'll ask whether some of the provisions are customary for business administrators such as five weeks of vacation, paid vacation, in addition to one week of personal time, which is uh, section five of the proposed contract. I'm curious about the numerous references to tenure and non-tenure throughout the contract. Mr. President, I wasn't aware that the administrator got tenure. And I, for some reason, I, I guess because of my own profession, I'm particularly concerned with uh, Section 16 on outside activities, because it doesn't include the typical language that the business administrator uh, shall devote full time attention and professional duties to the district, and instead permits a wide range of activities outside the district. Uh, his or her discretion. The only time that the district needs to be advised of such an outside activity is if it will require a one full working day away from the district. So if you tell me that these are standard provisions in all business administrators' contracts throughout the state, I suppose we don't have much of a choice if we want a business administrator. And I do find these provisions rather clear. Do you have any other questions on her contract? Uh, no, those are the ones that the uh, council is here. Can we uh, handle that contract? I'll be happy to mock up, please. Firstly, uh, business administrators do get tenure. Uh, if they're in the position for three years, they get tenure on the first day. So there, it's a tenure position to answer the first question. Secondly, uh, the form of the contract uh, is a form that follows closely uh, the form that applies to most uh, business administrators. Uh, the uh, question specifically about uh, vacation or personal time mirrors what all the administrators in the district have, and it mirrors what the previous contract provisions for our previous business administrators contained, uh, as does uh, the uh, Clause 16, uh, which uh, talks about uh, some outside activities uh, but she can't be absent for more than one full working day. That would have to be reported to the superintendent. I would venture to say, and perhaps our, our BA uh, may want to address it, but with the amount of work uh, that being the business administrator of the Nutley School District requires, uh, I don't think she's going to have, frankly, much time to be involved in any uh, outside activities. And the contract does provide uh, for her uh, to work not only in the normal uh, hours, uh, but it also requires her to stay uh, beyond hours uh, because that is uh, incumbent upon a business administrator and part of the job because she's here for the late meetings, etc. unlike some other administrators. We also kept within the parameters of uh, a salary uh, that was... Uh, I have no problem with salary. All right. So that's the answer to what you referred to, I think, that satisfies you. The, the answers don't satisfy me, but I understand the answers, and I don't, unless board members want to actually. Well, I think about board members are not going to speak on that. I, I think that uh, the answers to the question were yes. It's your original question. Is it, a stand, is it a standard in the industry, so to speak? The answer, I understand from what council just told us. Yes, yes, you may respectfully disagree with that, but that's fine. Take away from what uh, Mr. Well, some of the answers, one of the answers was standard within the district, and that's what we, I thought a new board of education was going to start changing on that. Uh, Mr. President, there's also the reappointment of other uh, district-wide staff. Are we 
Are you going to be voting on individual contracts for those staff members as well? Could you be more specific? Well, not to pick on her, but I just happen to know her name. Mrs. Kukuza's name is on that, that list. Are there individual contracts for people like Mr. Kukuza, Mr. Weimeister, <coughs> and Mr. Ferrara? reappointing them in their current positions, but they haven't taken any action regarding salary or contract provisions. And yes, most of them do have individual contracts. Thank you, Mr. President. And that's uh, what we will be discussing on uh, July 12th at the special meeting that we're going to uh, announce shortly. <coughs> Any, anyone else? Then go ahead and uh, ask your question. <coughs> Mr. President, I very much oppose passing the resolution 13. Is that your superintendent or your second? And the appointment of the board of attorney. I'll tell you what passage of this resolution means to me. It means that the board will continue to get advice on the Open Meetings Act law and the Open Records Act law that turns those laws on its face. It means we'll never find out how the district went through design changes with referendum money that we now have to pay back the state uh, for those changes. And I suppose most expensively and most curiously, it also means that we will never get to the bottom of the Tritex scandal. How an illegal contract could go be in place between this district and a contractor for 10 years without various business administrators, the board attorney, auditors, board members who attend continuing board of education classes is, should be of extraordinary concern. In any other public entity, this would be the subject of a special investigation, either a special committee appointed or a special council. Can I make a point of order, please? No. In the real world, such as in a corporation, there's a... I'm calling for a point of order. Now, I believe I have the right to do that, council. You do. Okay, wait a moment. I believe, and if I'm wrong, please correct me, that the public should be asking questions, not lecturing the school board on an action that they are going to take one way or the other tonight. So instead of going into this long lecture, I would ask that either you, Mr. President, or council, ask the public at large right here if he has a question. Do you have a question, sir? We understand you're opposed to superintendent's resolution number 13. Well, then my question is, is this Board of Education ever going to get to the bottom of the Tritex standard? Is it going to launch its own Mr. special Thomas, investigation? Mr. Thomas, Mr. Thomas, with all due respect, there are, there are investigations going on as we speak. Okay, we have counsel. Uh, separate council that's looking into all the legal matters and I'm sure you understand exactly what we're talking about we talk about it all the time and ultimately the answer to your question so we can cut to the chase ultimately yes who has been appointed special counsel to investigate there's no special counsel to investigate you understand exactly what we're doing there's, yes, no, reason, there's no reason to be facetious Mr. Thomas please no one's being facetious no I believe you are you're, you're Why that's my, you, that's Mr. my President, do you think I'm not going to argue with you, Mr. Thomas. I'm going to ask the We're question. We're not going to debate it, and it clearly says in, in the rules that if you become abusive, I will have you sit down. So I think you're right at the precipice here. You're pushing the envelope, and I will not allow you to push the envelope. You made your point. We understand it. We respect it. I can respectfully disagree with your point, but your point is, will we ever find out? And the answer is yes. Guess what? The answer is not tonight. Tonight is not tonight. Is Construction Council, Mr. President, charged with doing the investigation? I'm not going to discuss with the ongoing uh, legal ease of what our council is or is not doing. It's not appropriate. This is not the venue. And when the time comes, you'll have your answer. Tonight is not that night. Thank you, Mr. President. You're very well. Appreciate your time. Anyone else? Okay. If this. Uh, this time we're going to uh, move to executive session for about five minutes.
to quick discuss some uh, personnel legal issues before we go through the uh, resolutions. And right after we uh, read the resolutions, which should not take long, we're going to have our uh, discussion on building Kimbrough. So whereas the Board of Education will be discussing matters exempt from public discussion pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12, and therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education recess to close executive session at this time to discuss the following legal issues. Be further resolved that the results of the discussion will be made public by inclusion on the agenda of a subsequent meeting of the Board of Education on the reasons for such matters in closed session no longer exist by some of the Second is the Scarabelle. to stay in our district, I would vote no on this retirement because I believe it would be unfair to her as a longtime district employee who has, during her entire tenure, demonstrated extraordinary commitment and dedication to this school district. She deserves proper compensation for the work she dedicated her life to. Mrs. Franchosi and many of the fine educators that we have in this district have become victims of a reckless policy born in Trenton, New Jersey, which shows good, dedicated people to the door as their reward for their years of service, their commitment, and their dedication. This reckless policy also forces boards of education like this one you see here. And I want to make something very clear to every member of the public who's listening to this. Every board member here is a dedicated individual who labors tirelessly over many of the decisions that have to be made. So I just want you to know that as colleagues, I respect the decisions and opinions that you make, but I have to share mine this evening. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, the value of the almighty dollar is replacing the value of the best and brightest that we have in our school districts around the state. And the sad commentary about all that's going on statewide and what we're being 
felt here at home through the retirements of our teachers and especially the fine educator to my right is that the true victims of such public policies are not the staff and not the administration, but the true victims are the children of our district. So with great reluctance, and I mean great reluctance, when it comes time for me to vote on this issue, I will be forced to vote yes. Thank you. Mr. Schroeder, you had a question? Uh, well, it's not a question, it's a statement. Uh, Mr. Zara, I'd like to compliment you on uh, picking uh, the three people that you selected to be our uh, vice principal, our coordinator of music, and our coordinator of science. I think these people are competent and hardworking, and I appreciate the fact that you've uh, selected them. Thank you. Uh, they, they certainly have earned our consideration. They've worked very hard and with great, great effect. Good. Thank you. Mr. Krasinski. Yes, Mr. Rowdy, thank you. Just a brief statement, and I, and I mentioned this to our superintendent. I, I need to congratulate the um, superintendent, the VA, this board. I, I think in the two, two months that I've been on the board and in the two years preceding here that I've been involved in board meetings and, and sitting in the audience, I think this is an aggressive agenda that we have tonight. A lot of time and energy put into it, unfortunately. There's, there's a couple issues here that I agree with Mr. Rogers on that, that need to be dealt with. But other than that, the, the uh, movement of this board, the movement of the superintendent, the VA, I, I think is a positive move that uh, I think is re going to re reflect very well in the community. Anyone else? Please call the roll, Mr. Kuzma. Mr. Kuzma. Yes. Mr. Kaczynski. Emphatically, yes. Okay, I'm going to abstain pursuant to law on item one. I'm going to say yes on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes on twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Anybody, if I get missing, I'm going to know. Fifteen, sixteen, I'm going to abstain pursuant to law. Seventeen, eighteen, I'm going to abstain, abstain pursuant to law. Nineteen, I'm going to abstain pursuant to law. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I believe the rest are all covered up to 36. I so move. Dr. Lee. Uh, yes, on all, I just want to abstain on number 13, and that's to reiterate a point that I had brought up in uh, our board meeting two weeks ago regarding the RFP process for board council, which, again, not to um, target any particular individual, I just feel that that process should have been an open and fair process. Um, Regarding this particular resolution, I have my reservations about voting in the affirmative because of the, um, the violations of the six points that were addressed in that best practices report for um, the best practices for issuing RFGs. So, yes, staying for 13. Mr. Rogers? As I say, there were great reluctance. Number one, yes, and then yes for the other. Mrs. Russo? Yes, on all, except I. Abstain on number one and number 18. Sada? Yes, abstain on one and eight. I'm sorry, one and nine. My wife's uh, sub uh, application. And there's one more, 18. And the rest, yes. Mr. Sada? Oh, yes, I'm all. Mr. Riley? Yes, I abstain on 116 and 17. Mr. Soto, will you please uh, move board secretary resolutions 1 through uh, 22? Yes, Mr. President. Actually, you know what? You can move them all. You can move 1 through uh, 24. The uh, two addendum items are uh, resolution 23, which is the uh, approval of purchase of window shades, and 24 being, uh, uh, you know, let's hold that number 24. So I want Mr. Scaratola to speak to that. So move 1 through 23 is listed. Please. Yes, Mr. President, I would like to move resolutions 1 through 23 as listed. So move. Second, sir. Mr. Kuczynski. Discussion. Mrs. Russo. Question on PA resolution number 15, educational data services for $1,950. Can you tell me what that's for? Mrs. Jamie. 
in addition to providing all the bids for a lot of our classroom uh, instructional supplies, janitorial supplies, et cetera, et cetera, which is approved under a separate resolution, Educational Data Services also goes out to bid on a lot of cooperative skill trades, which the district has used in, in several instances, such as HVAC repair, uh, paving, and things of that nature. So it allows us to be able to use their bids for those issues. They also provide compliance services for right to know and um, any other ancillary bids that they should happen to uh, enter into that we can take advantage of. Yes, Mrs. Russo. The A resolution number three bills and inventory payments. Appendix C, easy tax for $2,000. Can you tell me what time period that prepayment covers? This will carry us through the summer and um, should carry us into the beginning of the fall. So we make that payment approximately quarterly? Uh, it's on an as needed basis as it's presented from the transportation department. So that we're not putting too much money in the account. Um, as we Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Rogers. Mr. President, I want to make sure the public is aware that we are aware that resolution number 18, the safety grant, that there is wording, if you could explain to uh, uh, Mrs. Jamie, uh, regarding on uh, page 14. Now, therefore, it resolved that the township of Nutley. Yeah, we're going to change that to the Nutley Board of Education. So, for the record, let it show that uh, the final paragraph is being changed. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Nutley Board of Education will enter into with the uh, municipality. Thank you. Uh, before I get to you on that, Mr. Miscarico, I would like to. Uh, just say that, uh, explain to the public that uh, number 18 is a shared services grant, shared uh, with uh, Commissioner Petraco's office, and we thank Mr. Petraco for bringing that grant to our attention at no cost to the Nutley Board of Education, and hopefully we'll realize uh, $100,000 to the district if uh, that grant is approved, which I hope it will be. Uh, and uh, we're also working on another grant for his office as well that's a uh, non-matching grant. Mr. Miscarico. Uh, no, you just... It's one of the same. Uh, we didn't move mm -hmm. We'll get to it. Call the roll, please. Mr. Costa. Yes. Mr. Kuczynski. Yes. Mr. Miscarico. Yes. Dr. Reed. Yes. Mr. Rogers. Yes, on all the communication bills. If, if we could just go back to Mr. Miscarato, I believe he wanted to uh, abstain on number yeah, seven. Yeah, you give me that one to 36, that's for me for the curve, please. So I'll abstain on number seven for the law. Thank you. <coughs> Continue to call the roll, please. Mr. Sauter. Yes, all exception to number seven, I abstain on that one. Mr. Sauter. Yes. Mr. Riley. Uh, I abstain on number seven as well, and uh, I, uh, on resolution number two, I uh, abstain on check number 083434. And the balance I vote yes. Now, Mr. Miscaratola, if you'll move uh, board secretary, resolution number uh, 24. Mr. President, the adoption of a memorandum of understanding, COP COP, as we resolve Board of Education approves the adoption of the attached memorandum of understanding for the COP Secure Our Schools grant between the Township of Nutley and Nutley Board of Education, subject review by our board attorney and Township Attorney. I so move. Second. Second. Mr. Cook, thank you. Chair, we'd just like to uh, yield to Mrs. Kakuja. I just want to make sure that there were four dead board members uh, present that uh, abstain on uh, board secretary resolution number seven. I want to make sure that the record shows that, that uh, Mrs. Russo, Mr. Miscarato, Mr. Sauter, and myself all abstain on number seven for the record. Thank you. Okay. 
is the max portion of it. We have the opportunity to truly enter into agreement with the township regarding what's called dark fiber. Dark fiber optics will link public safety to town hall to the library to the high school. We will be able to do things that were unthinkable some years ago, but now with the technology that there is with the fiber, it will cost us nothing after the match. <coughs> I believe the cost is going to be $30,000. But I'll go on the record right now. I do plan on meeting with all of the commissioners to see if they would be anteing up anything so we can put up half and they can put up half too of $15,000. And if we can't, we can't. But we are going to hopefully move ahead to make that grid. We own about 30 inches of the telephone poles that run along the line, six poles. And what that means, the 30 inches of the poles, it allows us the opportunity to bring our own equipment in, to hang the fiber, to go from building to building and end up in high school, so that you'll have two entities separate and apart and secure, but also working in unison. It will allow us to have a data flow back and forth, storage of data, the bandwidth will be greater, the speed will be 900 times faster than we presently have now. So when you talk about true uh, shared services, it's a dream of mine with security that we will be able to link with the police department in emergency situations through the video that we have in place to allow them on a secure line with a, with a password at the appropriate time to view exactly what the school district would view in a lockdown situation. As a former law enforcement officer, there is nothing worse than riding in on a job that you have no idea what's going on. If we're able to give them a leg up by looking at the video that we're seeing of a lockdown situation or an emergency situation in a specific school, it would be great, it would be unbelievable to have a tool of that available to us. It's available, the software is there, we have the equipment, all the cameras that Mr. Viermeister has picked are above what we need, and that's what I'll be talking to you guys about. So thank you for your time, and sorry for being a little longer about that. Thank you, call the roll, please. <clears throat> Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. 
Mass Cartola? Yes. Dr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Rogers? Yes. Mrs. Russo? Yes. Mr. Soda? Yes. Mrs. Mazzotta? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes, and I would like to thank uh, Mr. Caracol for all the work he's put in, which is uh, considerable with uh, his development, uh, making sure that uh, this grant uh, was written in its entirety, completely uh, each state. It's on uh, strenuous demands, and uh, I thank you for your time. Yes. At this point in the meeting, uh, we're going to discuss something that uh, has been discussed before, uh, which is full day kindergarten. And about two weeks ago, uh, the board sat down at the last meeting, and that that topic was raised. And as a board, for the last six months, we've received retirements, uh, notices of retirement from staff members, from administrators and from custodial uh, and groundskeeping staff. They, I would say, came in until as late as some we just found out about today. So during that time period, we decided that uh, we wanted to revisit the topic of full-time kindergarten. And one of the questions that I brought up two weeks ago was, how do, we, how do we get there, not next year or the year after, but how do we get there in September? And uh, it's a difficult discussion to have because the budget is what the budget is. You know, we, were, we were given a, a, a directive by the governor to uh, cut our budget by $3.2 million, which we did. This committee, uh, headed by Mr. Cook, that worked real hard with uh, the BA and the Siemens in, in putting the budget together. And uh, we had to make some difficult choices, some uh, deep staff cuts. Um, we looked at programs, we looked at everything. And at that time, back in April, we decided there's just no way we can do full-time kindergarten. But now with all the retirements and, and uh, with the assistant superintendent uh, staying for the next 90 days and then uh, moving on to the next phase of her life, uh, we started to visualize some additional savings. So then we said, where could we go from here? Is it feasible? Is it fiscally responsible? And is it logistically possible with the, with the moves you're gonna to have to make to put it together if we do move it forward, uh, to move it forward? And on Friday afternoon, I had a conference call with the board uh, secretary and the superintendent. And uh, I, they'll tell you, I, I pushed pretty hard and, uh, to make this happen for September. And what we came up with was, was that if it's the will of the board, which I believe it is, and I'll talk about that in a minute, uh, that we could, we could get it done this year. The quandary really has been, what do we do in year two, year three, if the cuts continue and the governor decides that, you know, we're gonna go from 2.5 to 1.5 or wherever we go down the road, what do we do? Well, one option is you can put it out the referendum. That's not a real pleasant option as far as we're concerned, but it's an option. Uh, so at least it, it, it gets you where we want to go for year one, but year two is currently undefined. So after I had that discussion with the superintendent and the board secretary, I called every board member and explained to them the conversation I had with them. And I uh, said that we would discuss it on Monday. I asked everyone if they had any specific questions or Concerns, and the concerns are many, obviously. You know, it's an expensive program. Um, we don't really have a lot of money. This is gonna really uh, take us to the bone, if you will. And, but I, I personally believe that it's, it will be done uh, with fiscal responsibility. I think it's, 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 it's something that's long overdue for nothing. It really is. I, I can't believe that we're even having this discussion. It's, you know, we're, we're socially responsible, we're academically responsible, and I really want to thank this entire board who really spent a lot of time with me over the weekend discussing this and uh, issuing their concerns. <clears throat> In a minute, I'm going to turn it over to the superintendent and the board secretary to give you the roadmap of how we're going to get there, but really, it, it's, it doesn't leave us a lot of time to uh, navigate, if you will, 
the uh, logistic issues such as, you know, do we shut down a cafeteria to make it a classroom and, and, and put, the, uh, put the children back in the gym for, uh, for the lunch program? I'm not saying we are, I'm not saying we're not, but these are, these are all things that have to be discussed and that's why we're having the discussion tonight, so everybody gets a flavor for what would be necessary. So then if you don't do, if you don't shut down a cafeteria and move the kids to the gym, and by the way, what portion of the elementary schools are already having lunch in the gym? What schools have lunch in the gym right now? Washington. Washington. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, it's not it's not a novel idea. I mean, it's happening already. It's not it's not a pleasant uh, move, but given given the option, do you have full day kindergarten or, or do you move a, a you know, do you move us into the gym for lunch? In, in my opinion, it's it's uh, not a difficult question. Now, the other issue is, do you go out and spend money for a trailer, put another trailer outside, and have it in the trailer instead of the gym to take down the uh, the cafeteria? So these are all discussions we'll have in a moment. But for now, I'd like to turn it to the superintendent uh, to give us his ideas. Thank you. Um, there is great educational merit to full day kindergarten. Uh, those of you who were here for the, from the beginning of the meeting saw a, uh, a revamping of the curriculum of kindergarten through high school. And I must emphasize that when we did the kindergarten curriculum, Mrs. Francioso and Mrs. Clerico were emphatic that we should do it for a full day as a contingency to put that in place. So we do have a curriculum for full day kindergarten in place. Secondly, uh, we know that students benefit from early learning, early intervention, uh, from all of the positives that come out of doubling their time in the classroom at a very, very young age. Um, I have no reservation academically. Uh, my concern, and I think everybody here is concerned, is affordability. Uh, it, it, it is uh, an option to uh, put this together and then look for a referendum approval next year, perhaps the year after. And I would, I would never speculate on what the future will bring regarding Trenton and funding and caps, because that's changing daily. But uh, I think what we have to realize uh, is that we have eight weeks, eight weeks to do the physical part of it. Certainly, we will handle the communication with parents. We will make recommendations for staffing. We have that penciled in. <clears throat> we have the curriculum available. I'm sure there's things that we have not thought about yet that as we work this problem through, they will come to us, tables and chairs, desks, supplies, whatever. Uh, what I, I think, and I know that Mrs. James has been working very hard on this and, and really carving this out from all her other responsibilities is affordability. So not that I'm finished, but I would like to defer to her this morning where we are with the finances for this. In reviewing the status of the budget relative to all the retirements that we have received, and going over the positions that need to be replaced, positions that the superintendent would like to have restored, as well as some other movement that is taking place within the district. We are close to a um, net gain of about $215,000, which will be the first line to be appropriated towards the kindergarten location um, and staffing. Um, this, the budget for the next year was put together and it was, it was extremely tight. There is very little wiggle room. We are going to need the cooperation of every individual throughout the district to be very mindful of expenditures. We are going to move through 2010, 2011 um, and maintain the budget the way it is. Uh, there will be very little room for anything extra outside of what, as probably next to nothing extra other than what was placed into the budget. So uh, everyone was extremely mindful of the current year's budget and did a very good job of controlling the costs. And I anticipate that that will continue so that we can be able to provide full day 
Um, most of our issues concerning uh, getting the rooms available, a lot of the work will be done by our own personnel to keep the costs down. And with all the other construction going on in the district, it is going to be very tight. But seeing that this is a priority for the board and the superintendent, we will do it, make every effort to make sure that it is accomplished. Thank you very much. We've got to start right here with Mr. Kuzinski, and we're going to work for you right there. Thank you, Mr. Reddit. As you know, I've, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for bringing this forward. As you know, I've been very involved in this myself, even before I got on the board. I, I, it's hard for me to believe that nothing hasn't been in the forefront in all day kitty garden as compared to our neighbors. With the board that we have here, with Mr. James on board now, with the diligent work of the superintendent, and, and the fiscal responsibility that we've showed already uh, in, in, in the two months that this new board has been in action, I know we've been frugal, we found some money in places that we didn't know we would even have, making reference to the uh, America, or Energy for America, whatever it was, that uh, we saved about $2,000 a month there, and I know we're going to continue to do that. I certainly am in favor of it, and uh, whatever you need from me, I'd be glad to come forward so with it. I appreciate that. Enough. I wanted to say, I'm sorry, I just wanted to say one thing. I, I, I know you recognize the board for us moving forward on this, but the, the teachers, the administrators that have put the time into, the, the two, two steps of this are already done. The, the curriculum is in place, the uh, rooms are there, no matter how we configure them, the rooms are there, now the finances are there, we're ready to move forward. Thank you so much. Dr. Reed? Uh, needless to say, I have a vested interest in this process. Um, my daughter just started her pre-K program today at a Washington school. Uh, but again, I'm cautiously optimistic in the sense that um, looking at the cost-benefit analysis, and my primary concern would be uh, it seems to be a tall undertaking in the eight short weeks that we're planning. And logistically, that would be my primary concern mm -hmm. in terms of is it going to be housed at a couple schools? Is it going to be all throughout the five grammar schools and so forth? Um, and again, the shortcoming with which Ms. Yeaman just shared with us now, um, the shortfall in that budget, the $200,000 that we're going to have to make up. No, that's the extra. The extra, but didn't we say that it's going to be about four and a quarter to run that program in its entirety? Four, three. I don't know. I don't know what the number is. It's 375 was the initial number, but that's dependent upon whether we need the trailer or not. If we don't need the trailer, the number is closer to two and a half. I mean, three and a half. No, and again, I can attest the educational merits that Mr. Zauer described earlier in terms of early intervention, early education. So needless to say, with other districts, as you mentioned earlier, Wallington, Belleville, that have moved in that direction, I can't see why not we can move in that direction as well. So um, of course, I would have to uh, um, at least endorse it in full support. Thank you very much. And, and we share your concern over the logistic concern, the logistic issues that uh, lie before us. Uh, and I've been assured from the staff that that uh, is not insurmountable. So I feel very comfortable that we can get it done or else I would be sitting here having a discussion. Thank you, Mr. Zabba. Okay, Rob brought up some good points that I had also. Um, I'm 100% behind you. Um, my question I do have still, maybe any clarify is, we said we have 215,000. To go now, we know we have the rest of the money to run the program. Well, let, let me just back up a second because one of the, one of the critical components of, of what she discussed earlier was based on uh, the, the superintendent's recommendations of the staff. We haven't had that meeting yet. That's that meeting is going to happen on the twelfth. The staff that, that he wants to discuss with us, but that's that's a worst case scenario. Is what she just described to you in detail to you. Okay. So if we bring, if we were to bring back, I guess, uh, is our 100 percent? Is that what your point is? If, if, if. So we still have, we still have, if we brought everybody back, we still have the money. Okay. Does that answer your question? It answers my question. Thank you got my support. Mrs. Russo. Um, I have the same concerns that have been expressed. Is the program sustainable? I don't know that I'd like going out for a referendum in years two, three, or four, or so on. I don't know that that's such a wise idea. 
I have a question, would, would it be offered in all five schools? Would we offer a half day program in any of the schools? It would have to be all five schools. So then my concern would be with lunch time, space issues, uh, space constraints there. Also, if we had additional money before we add another new program to the school, is the administration satisfied? As far as class sizes in the high school, has that been addressed adequately? Do we have any issues there? Again, class size in high school is a function of the course um, and the time of day. English one uh, tend to be larger than honors. Honors tend to be a bit larger than AP. Uh, classes during the lunch periods are smaller than classes before and after the lunch periods. Mm -hmm. But I, I think also the high school not only is, is it class size, but also it's a space issue. During the course of the day, unless something's changed, which I doubt, there's not one unoccupied class room, class room during the course of the day. Uh, and, uh, well, there are avenues we can do to, to help correct that, but we seem to want to avoid those. Um, back when I was on the budget committee, I know Mr. Could you say it like I'm sorry, but in your head, Liz? Can you repeat that? I had a microphone, thank you. Oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I didn't know what you with your reference. Yeah. I think you made reference to something about that we avoid that or something. Did you just repeat that? Yes, we seem to avoid how we could free up more uh, space in the high school. We don't want to seem to want to talk about adding to the school day zero and nine period or block scheduling, but that's not this uh, conversation. I would respectfully disagree. I don't think we've ever even really sat down and had a, had a real discussion about it. If you want to put it on the agenda, we'll put it on the agenda. Okay, I'll do that. Back to this conversation. When I was on the budget committee, the budget chair, Mr. Kushta, initially said the first year out he was looking at a projection of approximately three hundred fifty to three hundred seventy-five thousand. And I understand you've come up with approximately two hundred fifteen thousand. So it concerns me that we have one hundred sixty thousand not available and not yet budgeted for. Are there different numbers for the first year out than what was anticipated? No, I don't think anybody said 315. The original estimation of the program was 375, which included getting a trailer and having the trailer hooked up, which, which was somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 to 40 thousand dollars. Since then, some of the numbers have been revised by um, some of the principals based upon the enrollment that they currently have. And they revised that number down to about 300,000. Uh, but um, we definitely need to have uh, more of a discussion in terms of where the enrollment is going to end up so we can determine the correct number of personnel. The immediate cost would be three hundred thousand, approximately. That's the revised number that I was given. But we don't know whether we need a trailer or not. If we did, it would be another thirty-five thousand more. Uh, yeah. No, I think three hundred thousand included the trailer. The only thing that they said here was that there would be one less teacher needed because of lower enrollment. So you take the salary of the teacher plus benefits and you're pretty close to the difference. So then, then we have a shortfall of about 85,000. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, Ms. Harris, um, yes, I'm quite pleased and very happy to be a member of the board, but now this is going through. We've talked about it for years. And um, it has never come on. I can't say this word. I want to say fruition, but fruitation comes out. But, uh, <laughs> hey, you need a little levity. It's warm out, so. Um But I, I have to, I have to commend the staff and the administration for the job uh, of putting this together. But Kenny, to you personally, for being very convincing, and that's a very, I use that word very loosely, convincing in putting this together and getting numbers now. On, on a personal note, uh, I, I want to thank Mrs. Francios personally for all the hard work that she has put in. She developed the curriculum. She does the personnel, and there's many things else. And it comes on the heels of her retirement. Now, if you allow me to laugh, because uh, it's going to bridge. 
So now that her retirement is accepted, I have no conflict. So I can say that it's bittersweet in one respect in seeing her go as a retiree myself and people who know. But, you know, everybody is replaceable. But I've always said that, but at what cost? And that remains to be seen of the loss. So I wish her well on her retirement. And going back to the kindergarten, I'm very happy once again. We're all going to move forward. And it gives me great pleasure. I mean, to talk about the board, as someone said before, the board and gelling together and doing what we have to do to reach a common goal. Because I've said many times before, the common thread that we all have is the love of our district and the love of our children for the school. It may sound like, you know, a little bit of this, but it's the truth. It's always been with me. It's been with many of the members on this board. They've always thought about that all the time. As you can see in what we did with the shared services with the inter-agreement with the town, there are many more things out there that we could do to save this district money. I'm working on one thing right now, presently with the town. I meant to mention Jason's name from the, from the town, but I don't know his last name. I've only spoke to the Kurt. kid a hundred times in the last five days, but I don't know his last name. Kurt. Who was very, what was it? Jason Kurt. Very good. I mean, great guy, him and Ian, you know. But uh, there are things that we are going to look forward to doing that is going to be able to save the district and the Board of Education real dollars. And once I get that, we'll put that in. So thank you very much for the latitude, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Sawyer. Well, it's hard to follow. It's hard to follow Yogi, but I'll do my best. No, it's always fun. <laughs> uh, I, if we have the money, I think we certainly should do it, because no matter when you want to do a magnitude of this uh, size, there's going to be a problem. You're going to say, well, we can't do it now because insurance costs are too high. You can't do it now because there's too much uh, expense for health care. You can't do it now because there's too much uh, expense for staff. So if we can do it, we have to do it, I think, because it will be a, a lost opportunity. So that, that's number one. Uh, number two, um, let me ask some questions. Um, will this be mandatory full day for all kids? Or will people that choose to keep their children home for half a day be able to do that? Because I, I, I'm pretty sure that there are some parents that would like to have that bonding time, so to speak, with a young child for that half day. I have to confess, I would have to research that since we've never had full day kindergarten. It's never been a question that's come up. I'm not quite sure what the answer is. Uh, I would lean towards this is a district requirement, and uh, I think that if we were talking about full day kindergarten, it would make sense that everybody was educated at the same level moving into first grade. Certainly, those people who went to school the half day would be deficient in many areas. Well, I would agree with you. I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking that. about the, uh, the parents and what they would like, you know, and asking if that could be accommodated. I, I don't know if anybody would be interested, but. I think there probably would be some people. A, a, a backward answer is that we have uh, so many of our uh, half-time kindergarten students who are in extended day program. So essentially, they're out of the house all day. So we would have to look at that. But uh, we'll get the answer very quickly. We're going to be seeing the county uh, office on Wednesday. They're coming up for our six-month QSAC review. And uh, we'll have some questions for them. Uh, OK, I have, I have another question, too. Um, we're going to have the money for um, the full day kindergarten, will we have money to supply health benefits for the small group of perm subs that didn't get them last year? Or will that be eliminated as a result of having full time, uh, again eliminated as a result of having full time kindergarten? I don't think that's a question we can answer today, but I, I agree with you. I think uh, it's something that we should look at. We will make every effort to do that, is that true? Um, well, I think uh, it's a very good idea to have uh, all day kids uh, not only because of the uh, academic the support of the kids, but also I think you're going to encourage uh, young people with families to move into the town a little more encouragement because they will have a full day kids are. So I think from that aspect, it's, a, it's also a good plan. And if we have the money to do it, now's the time to do it. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Mr. Rogers. 
I believe uh, the last Board of Education last year promise was made to the public that if you pass the budget, you get full day kindergarten. We should honor that promise. We should that promise. All the uh, questions I had were answered. I, I do have concerns, as I know all of you do, rightfully so, about the finances, but I'm not a business administrator, I'm not a superintendent of schools, so I have to rely on the expertise of these individuals. And if you all want to go, I'm going to go with you. Before uh, I get to Mr. Kupta, I just want to call uh, Mr. Kupta is like uh, my voice of reason, it's like the, the angel on the shoulder whenever I stray in, I in the wrong direction. Fiscally <laughs> <laughs> speaking, I, I rely on uh, Mr. Kupta. He's, he's extraordinarily bright and talented, and, and uh, we go at it uh, sometimes, but in a good way. And uh, again, I'll reiterate that he worked tirelessly to put the budget together and uh, I was at the meeting as a sub uh, the night for the finance the final finance committee meeting when when we talked about pulling full day kindergarten off because there was just no way that we could make it work at the time so I, I want to thank him uh, and by, by the way I'm going to put him on the spot now he supports full day kindergarten I just want to say that before he goes but Jim it's well, all you. thank you Mr. President I have no fear, I will voice my opinion. Please, please do. Uh, the, certainly from an academic point of view, uh, it, it's a it should be a requirement for the district to go forward with it. Uh, my concerns, though, are uh, financial and logistical. Uh, not so much logistical because, you know, given the willpower, you can move a lot of things quickly, although I do have some concern in do we have really the, the, the space in each of the grammar schools to, uh, to do this, to pull this off in September. Uh, but again, you, know, you, can, you can move mountains if you, uh, from a logistical point of view. From a financial point of view, that's where my concerns are. I'm familiar with what was taken out of the budget as a result of the uh, cuts in the state aid. And uh, for example, there are nine teachers' uh, positions reduced, reduction in the middle and high schools. Reductions in some of the custodial staff, which uh, since then, uh, Ms. Gaines saw that there are some holes that have to be filled. Uh, we cut out a lot of the uh, technology money. Now, fortunately, there was some money left over this year, so that what we would have spent next year, we were spending this year. But it, you know, so, so it's a sustainability uh, question issue in my mind with respect to technology. And then uh, even a greater concern to me is the sustainability of all-day kindergarten uh, given the climate in Trenton. Now, uh, again, nobody knows what's going to happen in Trenton, whether the 2.5% uh, hard cap would be put in place or not. If it were put in place, increase in health care costs would show up the entire 2.5%. Uh, so to, uh, to maintain, you know, we might be in a position where we have to go to referendum or we'd have to go back to not take kindergarten. If it were at uh, four percent current cap, uh, the the benefit of the retirements is you bring in teachers at the, the, the lower level, the, the, the bottom step. Uh, all those teachers will go up a step come next year, and that will chew up to the other one and a half percent, getting to the four percent increase uh, cap that point in time. Uh, so I, I have real concerns about the sustainability of all day kindergarten at this point in time. Uh, also, we haven't reviewed what the, you know, what's to be restored and, and uh, what, what we can and cannot, uh, you know, from a priority point of view, uh, what, what positions should be a higher priority than all, all day kindergarten. Certainly, you know, uh, test scores are on the rise. Uh, in Safe Harbor in the high school, and I would hate to see that jeopardized uh, by having an all-day kindergarten and not having adequate staffing in the resource rooms in, in the English department and the science department. So I have those concerns uh, also, and uh, so that's where I stand. And, and I, uh, I share those uh, concerns with you, no question about it. Uh, you know, I harken back to a meeting that we had uh, maybe two months ago where we kind of put the pressure on the superintendent in asking him 
will there be a negative impact academically, especially at the high school, which we've discussed many times as we've just reached uh, Safe Harbor. And we were assured that even with all the staff cuts that we would not suffer uh, academically in that school. We, we discussed having uh, department chairs pick up some slack and uh, so, some had no classes, some had two classes, some had four classes, and we, we discussed having more parity there where they would be able to fill in uh, staffing positions. So the fact that we were at that point two months ago, and now we're talk talking about bringing back everyone and still having full day kindergarten. Um, I think uh, the reason that we at this point is we did not anticipate retirements that we realized that in September I really was looking at perhaps three or four retirements. Uh, I think we're at 27. Uh, so with the savings in salary benefits, uh, I propose to discuss with the personnel committee and then the full board on the 12, restoring some of these positions, but that's why we're proceeding cautiously. We're, we're trying to uh, meet two goals. Bring back staff that while we certainly uh, were going to live without with the $3.2 million reduction, it would be very, very uh, beneficial and a wonderful thing to restore them. But also, uh, keeping in mind that even restoring those positions, we have $215,000 in, in benefit. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this one thing I, I do want to point out is we are meeting with the county on Wednesday, the county business administrator and the county learning expert. And uh, what we really have to pose to John Corrado, the county business administrator, Mrs. James made a wonderful suggestion of bringing him to schools that need renovations. He's going to tell us what we have to do. Uh, we may have to have an architect engaged. We may have to submit plans for change of use to trending. Uh, I have no idea how long any of that would take. Um, so we're going to have a clearer picture of the facility side of it on Wednesday at lunchtime. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, I would uh, suggest that at our meeting at the 12th, uh, I will move a, a, a attempt to move the resolution to move this program forward for September. And I understand sustainability and I understand finances somewhat. And I'm sure that Wallington 15 years ago was in the same position where Dr. Cacciola said, I'm not sure if this program could be sustainable for next year. And now he's about to start his 16th year, and we're just talking about it. So I'm not worried about sustainability because I, I, I think this district and this board is committed to moving this program forward, and, and we'll find the money. Uh, and like you, you uh, Jim, I'm less concerned about the logistics, even though we're hearing that we may have some uh, complications, depending on what happens on Wednesday, so we'll have a much better feel. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's my mission to move the program forward in September, and I'll have a resolution uh, to that effect on the 12th, uh, barring something catastrophic, which I don't anticipate uh, in the way of architectural <laughs> renderings or anything else. Mr. President, can I say one thing? Yes, ma'am. Uh, two years ago, 2008-2009, we had Saturday curriculums. We did not have the uh, curriculum sessions that we had this year where we did um, articulation days. I met with Mrs. Clerico, who chaired the kindergarten curriculum revision on, at those Saturday uh, curriculums. And we both agreed at that point that it was necessary for us to have an all-day kindergarten curriculum. So we have been anticipating this for over two years now. In the fall, uh, Mrs. Clerico, Mr. Ciclitano, and myself met because we all sit on superintendent's advisory to possibly uh, be able to do something concerning the all-day kindergarten. And we ourselves met with Mr. Uh, Nicolette to do um, where, some, where we could change some of the classrooms, where some of the classrooms now, for example, at Radcliffe School, used to be the superintendent's office, but at one time, that was the uh, kindergarten room. And what could be removed there, and, and whether or not his, um, his maintenance men would be able to do certain things. We know that we have to meet with the county 
Um, we also know that you, we may have to get an architect, things along those lines. But this has been in the works for um, a couple of years now, not, not um, withstanding that for many years we have asked if we could have an all-day kindergarten. And we are pleased that this board is willing to move that ahead. We also have materials from Extended Day. Mrs. Servazio bought a uh, trailer for the, the Yanaqua School, which now has this Extended Day Kindergarten in it. But that trailer possibly could be, we had talked to Mr. Net Nicorette about putting water in there and moving the art room there. Um, we, our plan was that we would not have um, any specific classes we don't want a resource room, we don't want uh, a strategies class, we don't want a kindergarten class. In a trailer, so to speak, we would like to put our, our specials in the class so that way every child can go through that particular trailer and it wouldn't be designated for just one group of children and have them segregated. As far as whether or not the uh, elementary schools could house at this point, um, Suppose, for example, you couldn't do two schools. Would you be able to take those children and move them to another school? That I do not think would work personally, but I'm not in a position to say that. Um, number one, with the schools you move them to are pretty much at capacity now. We're already talking about moving children, um, and moving those classrooms and making changes in those classrooms to house the children that are in their own neighborhood schools. So I don't know that we could do that, plus it would probably involve transportation and some other things, which we wouldn't be able to do. So I would like to see each school have their own full day kindergarten. And the other thing is, I don't think that educationally, it would be sound to have two schools have all day kindergarten and three schools or whatever, one school even, have a half-day kindergarten. That's not educationally sound, in my opinion. So I'm hoping that with the support of this board, uh, with the materials that we already have from Extended Day, um, they've been very generous to the school district, and with the uh, help of the county, that we can move this forward. Thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, in this section, we allow questions or comments on all school-related matters. Our regulations allow 30 minutes for these communications. And each person shall limit it to three minutes, and we ask you to stay within this requirement. Anyone would like to speak? Very quick, 45 minutes in place. Um, the first thing, I just want to thank this board for um, the uh, full-day kindergarten. I, it, academically, we know that this will benefit our children, but uh, as a working mother for the last 25 years who raised three children without a full day kindergarten, I can tell you that this will be such a help for those parents that are, will be, they're always scrambling to find somebody to take care of their child either in the morning or in the afternoon, and this will really be a help for them. So I do thank you for that. That's very important. Um, sir, I have pamphlets to give out and a brief a statement, if I may. I can ask you a question. Which, which is um, based on these pamphlets? Yes. I want to pass them out first. Sure. I also have uh, pamphlets for anyone from the from the public. Uh, tonight I'm responding to statements that were made during the, the BOE meeting on June 14, 2010. During a public discussion at the end of the meeting, a BOE member made mention that a certain person should be prosecuted for making serious allegations against a district employee. The BOE member then questioned the business administrator and legal counsel on the situation and asked counsel for ways to prosecute the individual. At that time, counsel stated that the individual was within their rights to freedom of speech to make the information known. I would like to say that I am fully aware that this particular BOE member was referring to me since it was I, as spokesperson of the, of the Nutley Parent Advocacy Network, 
who filed a denial of access complaint with the Government Records Council against this Board of Education to receive the 0809 district cell phone records of a district employee. Through mediation with the Government Records Council, we learned about the November, 9, two, November 2009 GRC case, Lavecchia versus the Borough of Mount Arlington, and we have a copy of that here, and this was provided by Mr. Pumaco, thank you, um, which found that redacted cell phone records were indeed public record, and these findings resulted in us getting a copy of the phone records in question. It was after that time that we felt that the records being public information should be made public. I, along with members of my organization, are disturbed that a BOE member would suggest that a member of an organization that has represented the parents and children of this community for the last six years be prosecuted for releasing public information which was put completely within her right. We are also disturbed that this particular individual will concern himself with only protecting the rights of his employees. We strongly believe that the BOE members do not represent their employees, just their employees, but are accountable to all of their constituents, who of course would include parents and taxpayers alike. As you can see by our pamphlets, we believe in the ladder of accountability. We also believe in keeping the lines of communication open between our group and our elected officials. In the last six years, we have made every effort to communicate our concerns to the Board of Education, the Board of Commissioners, and school officials, and we have found that they have been receptive to our concerns. It is in this manner that we would like to continue so that the health, safety, and educational needs of the children in this community are not ignored nor swept aside by those who are more concerned with political agendas. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I respond? I, I would really rather wait till old business because it's really old business. If you allow me. Derek Kinney, 147 Raymond Avenue. I, I'm sorry, I was taking notes on the, on the full day kindergarten. I'm just calling them up here if you could just give me just one sec. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I believe Ms. Yamans at one point was talking about a gain, uh, uh, a net gain of about two hundred and fifteen thousand um, dollars, and I think that's what I and perhaps some other people in the public were wondering about. If, if that were applied to the three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars that would be needed for the full day kindergarten. The perception that I had was that there was a uh, a shortfall of. Uh, There's actually. Uh, let me address that. Thank that's you. A great question. Because there actually is no shortfall. We haven't addressed the personnel issues yet. We haven't even had the personnel committee meeting. That meeting is going to take place on the 12th of July. So right now, as far as I'm concerned, there, there is no shortfall. Okay. It's we haven't. We're jumping ahead of ourselves. Okay, so the, the 250 I understand, days. I understand what your point is, and I understand the question. I'm not trying to be confrontational no, at all, because I'm in favor of the no, full year of kindergarten. I just, I heard a number, and then I heard right. Mr. Zara say that the gain was after we reinstated right. many of these people and reinstated, and so I just want to, cla I want to clarify. Hypothetically, if we brought everybody back. Okay. Um, Mr. Zara made reference to a meeting that was going to happen on Wednesday, and I have to confess that I... I didn't catch that all that. was with the county superintendent that's coming to the district on another issue, and he's going to mention this to him when he's here. Okay. What, what impact does that have on four-year kindergarten? It may have no impact. It, it depends. We're not, we're not really sure. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Kucha and Ms. Francioso made some very uh, good points about logistical uh, issues regarding full-year kindergarten. I, I see that Mrs. Clerico... Mrs. Clerico from uh, Spring Garden is here. Uh, I guess I wanted to know specifically uh, how a full year kindergarten would work logistically in Spring Garden. Do they have the facilities? Uh, what obstacles need to be overcome? Can either the board or the can answer that. Oh, thank you. And, and again, uh, once we, uh, we put this, uh, and again, I would say not a shortfall, but a reallocation of resources. We have only so much money, we have to decide what to spend it on. And there's certain things that we have very little choice and there's others that we do have some discretion so that's going to be uh, our, our very short goal for the next say week and a half putting this all together uh, regarding the facilities themselves uh, we, we we're confident that if we have approval to make this changeover 
that we would be able to house the students. There may be some inconvenience uh, regarding lunch, but that's not uncommon in elementary schools in this day and age. Schools, uh, yeah, um, the age of, our, of ours, were not built for the cafeterias. They simply were, they were lunch rooms. So, not to put words in the board's mouth, but it seems the message that I'm getting uh, with regard, uh, with notwithstanding the risks that Mr. Kucha made and Ms. Francioso made, uh, that there is, we have the logistics, mm -hmm. we have the money to do this, mm -hmm. and most importantly, we have the will to do this. So uh, things look good for September of 2010 for four year kindergarten? Well, I think what I said earlier was that I will have be prepared to uh, pass a resolution on meeting on the 12th, barring you know, catastrophic events such as the super, county superintendent coming Wednesday and saying it's impossible, you can't go. And the 12th will be a public whatever. meeting? Yes, it will. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? Jerry Parisi, 35 Oak Crest Place, Nully. First, I uh, would like to congratulate the superintendent and your entire staff on another congratulations on the uh, on the ceremony the other day, very hot day, I'm sure you all suffered, but uh, I think it demonstrates the way this district does that not only do we graduate another class of seniors in every grade, congratulations to all the principals, but some of these kids are going to some really great colleges, so again, congratulations, Mr. Zara. Mr. President, um, question for you. The night that you became elected president, uh, I congratulated you on reinstating at an ad hoc level mm -hmm. two of the important committees that the previous administration decided to disband, right. primarily personnel and um, um, academics. academics, thank you. Yes. And you did in fact start that going ad hoc. Do you have any intention of making them permanent standing committees again? They, they were permanent standing committees. You've made them permanent standing, did, yes. did you have, I haven't been at all meetings, have you had the two public readings to amend the bylaws, to add them back into the bylaws? They had to be removed by having two public readings. They need to be reinstated into yeah, the Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Do you intend on doing that? Because I think those yeah, committees were very yeah, important. Point. And I appreciate the fact that you put that As foreign policy chair, I appreciate that. As foreign policy and chair, I knew that was the case, so thank you. Uh, Dr. Parisi, if I may be credible to the teachers in the classroom, and then all of the building level administrators, the parents, everyone in the board, it's a partnership. You should not be here for a child or board members or any personnel who sticks in unless some colleges are going to discuss. Thank you, Dr. Parisi. Anyone else? Gerardo, J U R A D O. Um, I want to thank you for the curriculum presentation. But I also have a question. I didn't see anything in there for the special ed students that are in, in the inclusion classes. And what if we're extending that program, increasing the amount of inclusion classes for the high school children? Yes, I can answer. Yes. The, well, this is the, the, the curriculum is the same for all students in the inclusion class. The only thing that is different is the instruction, different instructional strategies for students uh, who have learning disabilities. But they're in the regular classroom with the curriculum as it stands. So you're telling me the same classes that are given to all the students in the high school are also available to special ed students? Not Are everyone, but a majority. And, and those students, uh, they have a regular ed teacher, I'm sorry, those classes have a regular ed teacher and a special education teacher in the same class. So there's team teaching where the special education teacher addresses the individual needs of those students. Okay. Anyone else wish to be heard? Thank you for that. Uh, Vicki Flynn, 43 Sylvan Place. Um, I just wanted to first comment that I'm encouraged by this discussion tonight. I was thrilled um, to hear it because I believe full day kindergarten is a priority that this district should and must have going forward. Um, it's interesting when you look at the numbers, two thirds of the districts in the state, from what I can gather, it's a hard number to get, but it seems like two thirds of the districts in the state have full day kindergarten. So I am encouraged by this. I understand the fiscal 
um, constraints that we're all faced with and the uncertainty, the trend, but I'm hoping that this continues to be a long-term educational goal for this district as well as a fiscal, a budget goal. Because I believe if it's a budgetary priority, it can and will be done. And I hope it continues to do that. And then, um, I had a question about, um, I know there had been some talk a few years ago that full day kindergarten was going to be state mandated. As a result of those type of discussions, I remember there was a date and it slipped. Um, do we have some type of plan that we could look at if we needed to implement? Well, uh, it Governor Corzine was uh, an advocate of full day kindergarten and he was uh, suggesting that they become a mandatory program, but then under the budget constraints and school aid that he was faced with, uh, he backed off on that. Uh, certainly there's a different philosophy coming out of uh, Trenton now, but we, we did prepare our curriculum. I'm not sure if you were here to be in the pro our meeting, but we did prepare the curriculum for full day. Uh, I think there's two things that I'm hearing from the table. One is affordability, and uh, Mrs. Jamins is looking at piecing together savings in several areas to ensure that it's affordable. And my concern is the timetable for approval. When we deal with schools that house students, we are under uh, a different standard regarding the physical plan, and uh, we would have to have approval. And it may be a quick turnaround time. They may look at it and say that if you do this, this, and this, you're fine, or they may want some detailed plans and a long approval process. We're going to find out on Wednesday. Okay. Um, there's a lot of talk about lunches and space for lunches if, if and when this was implemented. Mm -hmm. Is, it a, is there anything that prevents, for instance, having lunch in the classroom? I know my daughter has the full day kindergarten program in Lincoln. They have snack there. I know they go to the cafeteria for lunch, but um, is, is there a constraint legally from having lunch at their tables? No, I think it's an issue of supervision. Okay. Yeah, it's a staffing issue. And, okay. and uh, again, in Essex County in particular, the age of our schools, very few schools were built with working mothers in mind. Century. So they just don't have cafeterias or kitchens in schools, so they make it throughout the county. They do a good job of the community. They have lunch there at tables. I mean, we've, done it. I mean, we, we've done it under duress at, at certain schools when we didn't have, like for example, when we had to redo the gym at Washington School for a time, we did have lunch at the but it causes chaos and consternation. Well, um, I, I just hope that, I don't know if this would require like a subcommittee so that the discussion continues through the summer and just doesn't get lost, I don't know, to nail these out and communicate it to the public. Because I know I, I don't have the issue of whether or not my kid's going to be in full day kindergarten next year, but I know there's a lot of parents that are in that situation and they're trying to figure out what am I doing in September, September 8th, right? Well, we, we actually have letters prepared to that effect okay. uh, as a contingency that would go out to all those who registered for kindergarten. Do you have like a drop dead date? that you say, you know, I need to, if we don't know by this date, then there, it's not a job. Well, the date is the 12th. It's the 12th. That's it. We'll, we'll have a resolution that day, and if, I doubt if we'll know sooner than that, but I mean, that's the day. We may be able to communicate. Uh, yeah, if, if we can, we will. Okay, and that's it. Thank you so much. At least an email. Anyone else? Anyone else? <laughs> President Alan Thomas, 108 McKinley Street, before I was rudely interrupted. What was that? <laughs> uh, I do want to add my congratulations and thanks to Mr. Sharp Joseph for her long service to our community and our schools. I know she has worked very hard every year that she's been here, but particularly in the last couple of years, we really bring about some really fundamental changes to our curriculum and to our school operating. I just think she's been wonderful. <laughs> Mr. President, in one of the uh, Appendix B of the Secretary's report, uh, if I may, uh, there's a line on, under Capital Projects Fund under receipts in the amount of $2,506.68. I'm assuming that's interest earned on the funds 
in our uh, capital project plan. That's on appendix B, page one of one. something and having uh, Mrs. Griesbach contact uh, people that want to transfer and whatever. So she does have a, a contingency plan. And as soon as it's decided on, the people that have paid for all day kindergarten, I'm sorry, for extended day kindergarten, we'll hear from her. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Certainly, uh, there's a lot more that we'll say about Mrs. Francioso in a couple of weeks and months. We're thrilled that while she has decided to retire, she will remain through the fall to help us transition with so many projects still underway. And again, I echo all the positive sentiments and go beyond that. She has been uh, wonderful and uh, now I can confess publicly, I've known her since I was in eighth grade and she was a first year teacher. So <laughs> I finally re re betrayed her age. But thank you very much. All business. Actually, to you for all business because you have a comment earlier, man, and I asked you to do it on the roll business. I'll be further. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Kaczynski. I'm uh, sorry, Cook. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. I, I just wanted to uh, sort of on the roll business with respect to our website and uh, commend the uh, principals of the elementary schools. I don't know if people have looked at it, but uh, 
you should have anyone in elementary school. Uh, each one had a personal message out there for the summer, as a summer reading. It has uh, supplies needed for the fall, and, and they put that up like the next day after uh, school closed for the following, and, and the new, uh, you know, the new inter engine up for the internet is there, and it looks like it's gonna be really good, and a lot of good things uh, planned for September. So I'd like to commend the uh, principals. By the, by the way, before I go to Mr. Raj, I just want to promise everybody here that next time somehow it's going to be cooler. I'm not sure how to help, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate you hanging in here. It's pretty rough in here today. Mr. Rogers. Mr. President, last month we had this uh, presentation by the Bureau Associates. Have we heard, seen, or those whereabouts? Or <laughs> have we been given any grants since then? I got one. Any? <laughs> we didn't get that from him, though. So, so, so in other words, are we progressing? Because if we're not, I'm in favor of this school board taking uh, action, if immediate, to uh, make changes. Because there's some grants out there that, that may be available. I think we were waiting for a 30-day court to entitled to it. Honestly, that's a legal issue, and that really should be an executive, so it's the will of the board to uh, close later. Okay. Uh, and just uh, Understood. close that issue, which I think a lot of us... Uh, Yes, uh, I have a request for parts and recreation for the use of a school bus every Wednesday for eight weeks and two Fridays during the summer for the Camp Nothing program. I don't know if we have one available, but if we do, they will assume all the costs. Is there anyone who has uh, a, a question right now? We, we could use the money. <laughs> 15 cents the first mile. <laughs> Any other old business? Just one question on the check on the certificate of insurance. Which is the required on that? That's our bus. Good. Thank you. Any new business? Yes, one issue regarding the um, taxpayers. Sure, of our school district. I'd really like to talk about that uh, in the future. It's kind of late now, but I think it would be really healthy for our citizens to see. I, I think it's something that we should really look to do in September once school's open, perhaps mid September. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mrs. Uh, Yannis, we'd like to make a statement before we go into the executive and discuss legal one more time before we close. We will come back out, but there will be no formal action taken, so we thank everybody for coming. I just would like to uh, make a brief statement and extend my appreciation to Mr. Zara, Mrs. Franciosa, and the board on my appointment this evening. I have a wonderful staff here in Nutley. I have come to respect all the administrators in this district as well as the teaching staff. Everyone here puts their heart and soul every single day into this district. And I am very happy to be a part of your family and to continue to help not we move forward. So thank you. Before we go into executive, I just want to make a brief statement myself in, in regard uh, to all the retirements. Uh, Mr. Rogers made mention to it earlier that uh, most of these retirements are under duress, if you will. It's not because uh, these people wanted to retire and, and uh, I grew up in this town, I've been in this town my whole life. My kids went to school here. I'm sure some of my grandkids will go to school here if I have grandkids. And uh, when I look at the, the years of service from the retirees today, uh, it makes me want to cry because the, these are, you know, these are critical positions that we're losing in this district. And when I think about you know, what we're about to do in restoring positions uh, in two weeks from today and knowing that we're, we, we've lost the assistant superintendent who I have tremendous re respect for. My kids went to Radcliffe School. She uh, was a principal there after Mrs. Serafino became superintendent. And uh, I just think we owe these people uh, a debt of gratitude. We can't thank them enough, but I think they've done just an unbelievable job in 30, 40 plus years of service to this district. And I'd just like to give them a round of applause. Thank <laughs> you.
the Board of Education will discuss the matter exempt from public discussion pursuant to NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12. May I therefore be resolved the Board of Education recess to close exactly at this time to discuss legal matter. We further resolve the results of discussion will be made public by inclusion on the agenda of the subsequent meeting of the Board of Education and when the reason for discussing such matters closed session no longer exists.